And welcome to another Trippy Food live stream. It is Saturday. Uh, it's Saturday at 4 p.m. I'm going to go ahead and say it's Saturday night. So, you know, we're going to kind of kick our shoes off, hang loose a little bit. I am not wearing the same shirt I was wearing for the other two. I thought, you know, it would be kind of a tradition, but um, I decided I was going to wear the tiny Val shirt. Uh, so this is the shirt that I used to wear. And when I was on Reckless Eating, they would say, Val, don't you have any other clothes? I don't, but this is just it's just a favorite shirt. I don't know. I just feel really good about it. Uh, I see that there's one person out there, but I don't know if that's me. Hey, when you come into the room, when you uh, when you join, uh, just say hi, just so that I know who's out there and how many people are out there and everything. And, uh, and we'll all chat. We'll have a good time. So again, it is Saturday, and Saturday is beer night. It's Val's beer night. And so we have chosen, uh, this time we don't have a Eastern European beer. I do have another one for next week. But uh, this year, uh, this year, <laughs> today, we are going to do a, well, I don't know if this is, oh, Denver, Colorado. This is from uh, Denver, Colorado from the Great Divide Brewing Company, and it is Yeti Imperial Stout. And that sounds a little bit scary, right? I mean, it sounds fierce, strong, right? Yeti Imperial Stout. And this is, let's see, how much alcohol are we talking about in here? We are talking about, oh, um... Here we go. 9.5. Hey, so you might get to see Val fall apart today. Uh, I also got my uh, my favorite uh, bottle opener, but, uh, you know, it's a can. So, And I have some other treats that I'll eat uh, while we go. Uh, I got this at, the, at John's Marketplace, which is an Eastern European, uh, Middle Eastern uh, supermarket. And uh, this is... Well, let's see. What is this? Uh, it's beef stew in a can. So this is, I wrote this down. This is what? This is Tushanka. Tushanka. It is a Russian style beef stew. It comes in a can. And even the Russian one comes in a can. And um, this is from Slavos Meats in Brooklyn. Now, here's the funny part. I can't find a, a Slavos Meats in uh in brooklyn new york at all so uh if anybody out there is watching this please try to find and like uh we have one of the guys from brooklyn who who's from brooklyn here we do have a brooklyn guy uh amazing horse so amazing horse if you are watching this even after the fact and you know where or know anything about slavos meats Please let us know because i can't find them anywhere but but this is uh canned for slavos meats and obviously the you know, it's it's uh, Eastern European uh, writing on the can, and it translates to beef stew. So it is a Russian beef stew, uh, uh, Tushanka. Although uh, I think Slavos meats might mean that they're from Slovenia or that they they cater to Slovenia. I don't know. Honestly, don't know. Hey, Al, th, welcome back. Hey, Jim, early today. Uh, no, uh, did we start at four? Jim, were you in the last one or you were on the the first one? Bacon 420, welcome. Hey, we don't have any we don't have any bacon stuff today. We're gonna eat this though, this beef stew, this Russian beef stew, this Tashanka, and um, and I don't even have any bacon to put in it. But uh, hey, for breakfast I had spam and I greased the pan with uh, with bacon fat. So does that count? Hopefully that counts. I know. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, we're going to eat this in a little bit. I'm letting it cool off a little bit. I just heated it up. But when it comes out of the can, it, I mean, it literally looks like dog food. It's nasty looking. Um, it smells nice. It smells like, it smells and even looks a little bit like brisket here. Let's see if we, we can do this. Can you see that? I don't want to get that. There's a lot of broth in there for that stew. For a, a stew, you would think would have things in it like, you know, carrots, potatoes, that might have potatoes. There was a la this white, thick layer. I think maybe it was probably beef fat. But that's it. And uh, and we're going to eat this when it cools off a little bit. Beefy. It is, is it served cold? I pray to God that it is not. Because when you open that can, that looks like I'm not, I'm not eating that. Right. It, it, re it really it looks like dog food with with congealed fat in it. And so uh, so you heat it up and then it, it actually turns into something that looks more like a stew. Hey, Oregon Gamer, welcome. I don't remember seeing you the last time, but welcome. And welcome, Janice, uh, uh, local uh, local boy. Well, local girl. But uh, Janice, I wanted to mention to you, I, I left a comment 
on your YouTube page that I watched the video that your daughter did of the Wiener Schnitzel do hot dogs, and it was really good. And I really liked that kind of green screen thing. So if you can't be there, you know, be somewhere else. But I, I like that that she uh, didn't put in as much of a Wiener Schnitzel. They did have a, like the the retro Wiener Schnitzel background, but I I kind of liked that when they were doing the German one. There was a picture of Germany and you know stuff like that. That was good. So uh, good review. Uh, were there recipe suggestions? No, not not for this. But like, again, I'm still I'm looking for. Um, I'm, I was looking for any for information online. Now, you can buy it on Amazon, um, but there's no information about it. So, uh, and again, I tried to find the company that makes it, the company that cans it, and um, and uh, you know, nothing. So, like I said, hopefully. Um, Hopefully, Amazing Horse will join us today, who is from Brooklyn. At least I think it's Brooklyn, New York. There's a lot of Brooklyns. There's a Brooklyn area of Portland. He might be from there. Uh, Ducks Rule, hey, welcome to see you. Uh, good to see you doing another live stream. You guys, you guys, so for now, because everybody liked this date and, I mean, this day and time, you can assume that we will be here every Saturday at 4 p.m. Uh, well, 4 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, whatever. Hey, Jason, welcome back. Hey, everybody, say hi to Jason, Jason Cantrell. Uh, Jason, uh, I think I mentioned this on the last um, on the last stream. I did mention that Jason was the one that came up with our slogan for the uh, for the blog, which was the gastro and petrol report, which was perfect. So so uh, welcome, Jason. And he also he and his clan joined us for the Rose City Pizza episode that we did. So everybody, say hi to Jason. Th. Oh uh, my. Uh, Terry, thank you. That's that's it's so much better than TH. I mean, you know, it's, it's okay. I'm VH, but you know, uh, but uh, but Terry's good. Now we can call you Terry. That's always nice. Yeah, if you guys uh, if you guys have names that you would like me to call you, um, not those kind of names, but if you have names that you want me to call you, put them down there, and uh, and we'll uh, we'll call call you that. So uh, Jim, it's good to see you again. Um, if I, I I didn't mean to uh, to go over that. Hey, uh, Ducks Rule, I did have a question for you. Oregon or Anaheim? Let me know. Okay, so um, we are going to eat the beef stew. Now, maybe, maybe not right this second, but in a little bit. And I wanted to do this plug, and it's not a uh, – I'm not getting paid to do this, and I'm not being asked by the company to do this. I just think it's a great idea. So there's this uh, brand called World Centric. I'm trying to get that where it's not in the light. There, that's better. It's called World Centric. And they make these – these. they look like uh, your average garden variety, you know, plastic spoons and knives and forks, but they're biodegradable. They're made with corn and something else. What are they made from? Corn, not petroleum. Corn and what? They, they, there's got to be something else in there. But they're saying corn. Call me squiggly piggly. I might, I might actually do that bacon. Well, squiggly piggly. I'll call you squiggly piggly or S, SP. All right? Uh, Anaheim. Okay, ducks. I just I, I, our ducks rule. I guess. Uh, yeah, I was just checking because you know ducks are pretty big up in Oregon too. So just wanted to make sure which ones would. Have you checked out Ian Kiner's Let's Peep This Out? I have not. Hey, but by the way, welcome Sonic Jet. I think you're new here. I haven't seen you last time. At least I haven't seen you post uh, uh, post a comment. So uh, so welcome. And uh, I have not checked out Ian Kiner's Let's Peep This Out, but I, I certainly will now because uh, I'm going by a lot of suggestions. If you guys have suggestions, put them down here. Also, I just want to let you know that I am taking note of the things that you suggest during these live streams. And uh, so like uh, uh, DB82 from Dublin, I'd like to see that. I hope hopefully they come back because they, they were interesting. Uh, but DB82 from Dublin suggested, and I'm going to say this wrong. I found out that I'm going to say it wrong. Chris Sabik. Salich. it's uh, um, but uh, uh, he suggested that and Tato sandwich and um, and so so we're go we'll go we're gonna try to do those episodes and, and if you guys make this suggestion we'll give definitely give you a shout out for for those the Tato sandwich is gonna be difficult because Tato is a brand of potato chips or crisps that come from Ireland and they don't sell outside of Ireland for they say copyright reasons I don't know what the hell that means. Uh, so, uh, so I'm trying to find somebody from Ireland or at least somebody close to Ireland where I can actually get these, um, Tato, uh, potato chips or crisps. 
uh, and send those so that we can make ourselves a Tato sandwich. But uh, but it is it is it's on our bucket list, and we're gonna we're gonna definitely try that. Um, uh, Ryan Jones suggested uh, Julian Dutch apple with cheddar cheese. We're gonna do that. Uh, Jeremy from uh, Indiana he suggested Nancy Brew and the Hoppy Boys from Brooks Books and Brews uh, beer. We'll try that. Uh, Ryan. Amesqua, I hope I'm saying your name right, from uh, from Fresno. He suggested Arctic Circle Burgers, although we're going to have to go to uh, Utah and Idaho. But, hey, I got a car. I'm willing to go. And Turnigate Jaw suggested a whole bunch of stuff. You know, so, uh, yeah, uh, we'll definitely give you a shout-out when we do that. So, I'm sorry, Sonic Jet is writing a whole bunch of this stuff. Yes, new here, thanks. He does Food Refuse, too. Uh, Dame Drops, I know Dame Drops. Fast food, Justin, all YouTubers for years now. Okay. Yeah, I heard, hadn't heard of him, so I will I will definitely check him out. Um, fast food pit stop. Okay, check that out. And Ken Dominic Productions. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot. I'm not familiar with with, uh, with any of those. I don't think, I'm just Dame Drops, of course. Um, but I'll check the other ones out as well. He's from Canada. I think, I, I assume you mean Ken Dominic is from Canada. Yeah, so, um, oh, Canada. All right, so uh, uh, so yeah, if you get a chance, and these are they're a little bit on the expensive side, like a, 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 if you're buying a package of uh, utensils, it's a little bit on the expensive side, but uh, but it's good to the environment. So you can throw those in the trash, knowing that when they go into the landfill, these will actually decompose over a period of time. So just wanted to say that. The other thing is, and um, and it's kind of a pain because you have to carry it around with you and everything, are glass straws, and. Uh, Usually when you buy these, I got these at the dollar store, and it comes with a little, I don't know if you can see that little that little brush there. It comes with a little bottle brush so you can clean it out afterwards. And it comes with a, in a set of five. And again, this is $1.99 at the dollar store. <laughs> I know. Um, uh, but uh, but again, you know, no plastic uh, ending up in turtles' nostrils or anything. And I know a lot of people are going like, what's the big deal? I throw one straw. It's like anything, anything you can do to help, anything that you can do. Like, okay, so... Let's talk about what. How do they taste? You're talking about the plastic utensils. How do they taste? Um. Okay. Uh, Ken Dominic is friends with we. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, Matt. Uh, Matt and um, Matt and Majestic were uh, we filmed on uh, was it Wednesday? Wednesday we, well, yeah, Wednesday we filmed probably about seven or eight episodes. We filmed a bunch for Reckless Eating. We filmed a bunch for Trippy Food. So you're going to start to see some uh, some more episodes with them late, um, coming out soon. So I, I will talk to uh, I will talk to Matt about uh, about Ken Dominic. Yep, utensil flavor. Well, let's do a taste test. I've used them before, and I hadn't noticed any, you know, any off taste or anything. You would think maybe because they're made of corn, they would taste like corn, but I don't think so. I'm gonna taste. I'm gonna taste a handle, only because you know I'm gonna put food on this part. I don't know that it makes a difference. It's my own spit, my own saliva. Tastes like plastic. It doesn't have. You know what? It doesn't actually have that chemical taste that that plastic does. You know, sometimes plastic has that chemical taste. Doesn't have that, but it, it also doesn't taste like corn. It tastes like you know, like some sort of industrial product. But that's good, and it doesn't uh, doesn't flavor the food. I'm a big fan of El Pollo Loco. Yeah, I am as well. Mexican style chicken. Yes, I am uh, d definitely. So, uh, so here in the LA area, you are from you. You mentioned oh, Alhambra. <laughs> oh, you liked my review of the hat. But that, for some reason, people in that area hated the way I say Alhambra, right? And, and so, you know, I guess people are, are a little bit touchy about it. I, uh, I grew up in, uh, in New England, particularly in Massachusetts, and they say their names of their cities a certain way. Um, and, I, and I try to say that, like, like, like I might say Worcester, um, although they would say Worcester, right? Riviera, Worcester, Chelsea. Salmonville, Dorchester, right? But uh, but uh, apparently they didn't like the way I said Alhambra, and um, and so people made sure that 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 was the key the key takeaway they had from that episode on the hat was that I was saying Alhambra wrong. You know, okay, I'll, I'll take it. Um, so you love pastrami sandwiches and chili fries and hot dogs. Now, uh, because you live in Alhambra, I take it that you go to the hat. On, on, a, on a frequent basis. So, so 
Would you back me up on this when I say that when people talk about uh, food from the Los Angeles area, right? People always talk about tacos and bur- it's like that's from Mexico, right? I mean, like, like there's plenty of unique stuff in the LA area that you should be taking advantage of, like, like uh, the French dip sandwiches, right? But the one for me, like when I uh, when I would go back and forth between here and uh, and Portland, Oregon, when I would get in the car and just before I left. Uh, LA, I would always stop at a Circle K and get an Orange Bang. And uh, and if you don't know what an Orange Bang is, it's it's similar to an Orange Julius that you get at Dairy Queen, uh, or I think you used to get it at Dairy Queen, and now maybe Orange Julius is a separate place. It, it's very similar to an Orange Julius, but it's so 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 much better. I think they put egg whites in it, and it makes it kind of frothy and everything. And it's ice. Uh, um, uh, I want one right now, and I don't have one. Uh, my wife bought reusable coffee filters. Oh, nice. Uh, tea bags, metal straws, the brush included. And yeah, metal's good too. Um, they won't break. And reusable bathroom garbage bags. Surprisingly, it works well and stay clean. Good, cool. Park Shop Express, way to go. Every little bit helps, right? Uh, I, I was I was saying before about uh, you know the global warming and everything, and people go like, so what if we if we make this change, it, you know, it, it it won't even make a difference in the long run. Just one person, they're like, yeah, maybe so, but you know, just. One little bit helps, right? Every little bit helps. So, yeah, I agree. It's really Alhambra. Alhambra. Okay. Uh, I think uh, it, it was originally a city in Spain, and I think it was Alhambra was the original pronunciation. But, you know, but if locally they're saying Alhambra, then, you know, Alhambra it shall be. Uh, Stoner Kitchen, hello. Uh, you look new. Uh, I don't. I don't recognize your name unless you were lurking in the background before and didn't uh, uh, didn't post anything. But welcome either way. Have I been to Dino's Kitchen? Dino's. I'm sorry. Dino's Chicken. Uh, no. Where is Dino's Chicken? Uh, because I will have to check that out. And uh, and let me know what you know. How good you think their their stuff is? Um, unless you meant Dinah's. I've been to Dinah, and that's D I N A H. But I've been to Dinah's, but not Dino's. Um, well, I used to, but now we can't eat there because of the coronavirus. Yeah, that's true. Um, but that will hopefully that will get better, and hopefully we'll be eating. Well, I would think that you you could get that at the hat because the hat's just a takeaway stand, anyways, right? I mean, it's just basically window service, right? I don't are they closed? Uh, I don't know. There's other places that do have it too. Like they used to have it at at the, like the Circle K gas stations and stuff would have it. But I know they have it at the hat because you know every time I go to the hat, I get an orange bang. I've never been to a Circle K for anything specific. Yeah, um, like I said, the only time I go is when I was going back and forth to stop to make sure that I get an orange bang for the last time in the L.A. area. Uh, I just had the hat last weekend. It's great. Uh, Los Angeles is the king of pastrami. Is Los Angeles the king of pastrami or is Pasadena the king of pastrami? I know they there's places in L.A. that do it, but but um, but I think it's I think it's mostly uh, mostly congregated in the uh, Pasadena area. Is that not, do, do you not get that, Jason? I know that like there's a place called John, Johnny's, Johnny's, which is on Sepulveda, and that's in LA. You know, the north northern part. It might be LA. It might be uh, it might be Santa Monica, but I think it. I think it's LA. Um, not delicatessen pastrami. Yeah, that's a key difference. Like if you tell tell people, oh, the best pastrami sandwich is the hat or or um, tops or um, what's the other one? Uh, Lucky boy, right? Then you're talking about a different kind of sandwich. So somebody who's let's say they've been to uh, Langer's, right, and they had the pastrami sandwich in Langer's, they go like, "No, you're out of your mind. It it can't be better than Langer's. It's not better than Langer's. It's different than Langer's." So you're absolutely right. A lot of people they get that confused, and if you say pastrami sandwich, I would say I would call that a pastrami dip, and then that kind of differentiates that from you know a, a Jewish deli pastrami sandwich. Okay, uh, Janice, our local mom and pop burger has orange bang and pineapple bang. I haven't had the pineapple bang. They also do. I think they do like an horchata. Uh, they do an Nortrata drink. If I had, if I had the, what am I talking about? I do. There's a place like right around the corner that has Orange Bang, and like I should really be over there all the time. But I make it something special. I don't. I don't something that I don't have all the time. Uh, Sonic Jet. That's right. That's 
the way I learned how my city was named right Spain is the origin of Alhambra, right? But it is Alhambra locally, so I'll start calling it Alhambra. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm all with making people happy, you know. But if I talk to somebody who's, like, speaking Spanish, I might say Alhambra. Uh, nice, like the names, uh, Stoner Kitchen, Bacon Fort. Yeah, I, I like the names, too. Uh, Bacon 420, it just kind of indicates more than one thing, doesn't it? And, and, and Bacon 420 and Stoner Kitchen, that's very, you know, you guys have very similar themes running there. Uh, the hat is where you can get your food order but can't sit there. Yeah, they do have tables in the back uh, there at that one, but uh, I'm sure that they're closed right now. I'm sure they don't let you sit at the table in the back. So, you know, it's for takeaway for now. They have a few locations in the LA area. Chicken and fries plate is their specialty. Greasy, but so good. I will definitely check that out, Ducks Rule. I will definitely check that out. Our burrito joint has the trifecta, orange bang, horchata, and Jamaican. There you go. I wonder what would happen if you mixed all three of those together. Sounds like a challenge. Sounds like we're going to have to do that, Jason. So uh, are you down for that? Let me know. Uh, we will get, uh, by the way, we will get Jason back on some other ones. Uh, he was in our um, Dirt Dog episode, and uh, he and his boys were in the um, Rose City Pizza episode. So, again, everybody say hi to Jason. Jason and I go way back, 30 to 40 feet. Um, what it, wh the, what's the place in Eagle Rock they also make pastrami? Uh, the Oinkster? Is it Oinkster? Uh I don't know. I think Oyster, Oyster has a, uh, a, a pastrami dip sandwich there. Um, I think there are a lot of great pastrami joints throughout L.A. County. Most are the breakfast burrito, hamburger, pastrami sandwich, chili, cheese, and fries table. I, I just – I gained 15 pounds just reading that. Ryan. Hey, welcome, Ryan. Uh, more people here than last time already. Good day, Val. Yes, there are. There's 13 here. And so that – I'm going by this. I'm wondering if there's a way I can click on that and see who those 13 people are. I cannot. So I can't tell who's here unless you, you know, leave a, uh, you know, leave a chat, something in the chat window. So do that. So I let you, so I know who's here. Now, Ryan, welcome back. You have been here before. Ryan, I was going to, yeah. So Ryan, you, uh, if you just came in, I was talking to people about suggestions that people make. And when I film an episode, I'll do a shout out. So you had made the suggestion, or at least you said that your your like last meal food was a Julian Dutch apple pie with cheddar cheese. And so we we are planning on going to Julian and uh, and doing an episode there. So we are going to do the Julian Dutch Dutch apple pie with cheddar cheese, and we'll give you a shout out for that. Add tequila to what? Um, yeah, it's it. Th this is good. But I have to keep. I have to keep at it. I have to uh, like follow this thing. Keep at it. I don't want to leave. Uh, are you into vegan products? Uh, I uh, I I am into everything. Absolutely everything. So I don't I don't like I don't put limits on anything. So if you look on our um, you look on our YouTube channel and do a search for vegan, we we've done a whole bunch of vegan things. And so uh, some of them uh, better than others. But uh, uh, like there was a vegan barbecue place up in Portland, Oregon that we did. That was really good. Um, we did some vegan and vegetarian hot dogs. There was a Morning Star Farms. And what was the other one? Um, something roast something? I can't remember. Field roast, I think. And those were really good. And we've done some that were horrible and terrible too. So, And, and that's the thing is like vegans – like they criticize me if I if I say something bad about this vegan food and they go like yeah you just had it on your mind that you weren't gonna lie. I'm like no it's it's just bad I'm sorry you know I've had really good vegan food and and we've done episodes on really good vegan food but if it's bad I'm gonna tell you it's bad whether it's vegan or not uh where did I leave off so uh Sonic Chat Oyster in Eagle Rock yeah that's what I thought Jason I thought they were talking about Oyster as well so um uh, it's all heavy food staples, breakfast burgers, pastrami hot dogs, all over San Gabriel Valley and downtown LA. Yeah, that's that's like everywhere, everywhere. LA County, LA County on a whole. That's like you know, that's why everybody here weighs five hundred pounds. Uh, everyone, drop a like, drop a like. Uh, yeah, and I'm getting a lot of thumbs up. There's waves. You are a scholar and a gentleman. Um, maybe not a scholar. Maybe not a scholar. I did not go to college. I did not go to university. Um, but uh, but I have a thirst for knowledge. 
Uh, actually, I call it a thirst for knowledge, but really what it is is, is an obsessive curiosity. And uh, and that's where I've learned most of this stuff is like basically I heard about something and I'm like, oh, I'm going to go and I'm going to go and see that. Or I've heard about some certain kind of food. and I'm like, I'm going to go and eat that. I'm going to find out what it is. Yeah, if somebody brings up something and I don't know what it is. It drives me nuts until I find out what it is. So, yeah, that's uh, I guess it's it's served me well over time. So actually, you bring up an interesting um, point or or maybe a fun game that we can play. So for the thumbnail for this streaming episode, I took a picture of, you know, the stuff on these two shelves here. And um, so you can kind of see them a little bit up close. And so they're little like things I've, I've collected. Uh, some of them are food, food type items and some of them are not food type items, but I've collected them in my travels. And so uh, if you get a chance, go out there and take a look and see if you can identify where some of these things are from. Some of them are pretty obvious because they, they're written across it, like the little snow globe that says Columbia on it. I think that one's a little bit obvious. The Gilroy Garlic Festival thing is a little obvious. Some of them not so obvious, but it's uh, fun to look through those and see if you can figure out what those are. Uh, the Hat has the best pastrami dip, and Langer's has the best deli pastrami. Okay. Um, uh, Ryan, I don't know if you were here when we had our discussion about best and we said best is not really a good um, – best is, is not as appropriate as favorite, right? Because best, best is all subjective. It depends on what your – you know, everyone's best is uh, as a personal thing. So when you see um, – when you see like a food website or something that says the best hamburgers in New York City, it's not the best. It's it's the ones that they are they they favor the ones that they are talking about. It's not the best, and it's click, it's basically clickbait. So uh, so I I don't mind when people say favorites, but uh, but I would agree that certainly the best pastrami deli pastrami sandwich in L.A. is Langer's hands down. Uh, I like Brent's Brent's deli is really good, but I think the pastrami sandwich at Langer's is better. And as far as the best pastrami dip, I'm gonna go. With, I I like the hat. I love the hat. But I think I'm gonna go with um, tops. I like I like tops better, and especially like like the stuff they do with like the pastrami burrito and the the pastrami burger and everything. Really good. So, um, but uh, yeah, love the hat, love Lucky Boy, and love um, um, tops. But I've not been to Johnny's yet. I, I I I need to check out Johnny's. Although somebody was telling me that it's pretty nasty. So I, but, uh, but you know, they're one of the big four, so i got to check that out. I've been to Lawyers. Is that Lawyers or Low Lowry's Sonic Jet? I think you mean Lowry's, right? Because Lowry's is like high-end, you know, prime rib place. Like uh, Morton's, one of those kind of places. Uh, yeah, that's expensive, but food, steak, steak and lobster combo. Ah, surf and turf. Yeah, that's probably the most expensive thing on the menu, too. Uh, try... Oh, I hate, oh, I hate having to say that. Akai? Asai? As, how do you say that? Asai, I think it is. Asai bowls. I haven't had, I've had Asai. I've had like the drinks and I've had it in other stuff, but I've never had the bowls. So yeah, I will give that a shot. What's your real name, Mr. Trippy? Oh, we did this. Um, somebody guessed. Um, somebody guessed last night. Now, Jason, you, you can't, don't post anything because you know the answer. Because I've known you for like, what is it, like 15 years now or something like that? No. It's, uh, 17 years. I've known you for 17 years. So, Jason, you can't play in this. But somebody else, um, it's easy to find out what my name is. So, one of you guys, I know I know the people out there know what it is. So, um, let, uh, let Sonic Jet know what it is. Uh, there's Val, of course, but that's a nickname. Right. So if you want the whole thing, somebody out there put it in. Stoner Kitchen, you are absolutely right. It is Valentino. That is my first name. Well, if nobody guesses Val H. Well, yeah, I come, you know, that one's easy. Right. Everybody knows I'm Val because I'm the, you know, people call me Val on the episodes, right? But it's Val is short for Valentino. And it's just Valentino is four syllables and it's harder to say than Val. So I just go, I just go by Val. But I answer to Valentino too. That's fine. Um Recommended can also be seen as best. Yes, recommended is good. Uh, recommended is not best. It is, it is, we recommend this place. We have gone here. 
it's we think it's good. We think it's excellent, and we're recommending it to you. You're absolutely right, Sonic Jet. Recommended is a good word, like favorite. Right. Uh, better better word than best. I just watched a cooking show where Marmite was utilized as a spread for an egg dish. Who does that to eggs? Uh, I've never had. Jason, are you kidding me? You have never had Marmite? Oh, we're going to fix that. All right, we're, we're going to do what we've done a bunch of, I want to say a bunch, but we've done a few Marmite episodes. Like we did uh, Nigella Lawson's Marmite Spaghetti, and it wasn't actually bad. And we've done just a straight Marmite episode. So we're, we're going to find, we're going to get some Marmite recipes, Jason, and you are going to be the guinea pig and you are going to be able to try Marmite. And we'll put like a little bit on a spoon so you can taste it. Uh, 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 but uh, it is not, okay. So hold that thought because I can't recall who it was last time was saying that uh, we need to do donations for challenge, kind of like what Reckless Eating does when they're doing a live stream. They're basically, they, you know, if you donate money, they'll, you know, they'll do it a challenge. I got to, I got to figure out how to set that up because he has somebody else that's kind of like watching this and, uh, and responding and, um, uh, and I don't have that. So I might need to do that in order to, to, to do that, but I would have to figure out something that's going to, cause you don't want to watch me eat something I enjoy, right? Like, like durian. Yeah, I could eat durian, but, but I like durian. So that's not really challenging for you guys. It's not, uh, so we'd have to do something like we definitely have to do bone deggy, the silkworm pupa. We would definitely have to do that because I can't stand that. Maybe marmite. Maybe we'll add marmite to that to that list, and we'll do marmite too. So so I'm working on that, working on figuring out a way to do that. We don't need, or I don't need the money, um, because I have a day gig, right? So this is uh, this is what I do for love, and um, and so I don't need the money. But you know, I, I will t if you guys want to give it to me, I will take it. Um, in 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 order in exchange for something entertaining uh, for you, so uh, and and then um, and so we also talked about merch. So you know we'll do merch too. Uh, Valentino her from the band Notice. Yes, Janice, you are absolutely correct. Have you watched those videos, Janice? Because that freaks people out when they see me in those videos. Uh, I don't look like this in those videos. So that's uh, yes, Valentino her from the band Notice. You're absolutely right, Janice. That is me. Are you Latino? I am part Latino. So I am on my father's side. I am uh, uh, Mexican and Native American. Well, Mexican. The, I'm sorry. Native American, Spanish, and some Portuguese. Um, and this is based on uh, based on the DNA test and, and trying to do my family tree through ancestry and everything. So, uh, so yeah. So um, Mexican, which is Native. A lot of Native American from um, New Mexico. And uh, and Spanish and some Portuguese, some Greek, and then a lot of Italian, lots and lots of Italian. So mostly Italian. Yeah. Uh, haha, a friend in Aus is that Australia, uh, Austria, or Austin, Texas? I'm I'm assuming AUS is Austin, Texas. Sent me some. Oh no, Australia. Vegemite sent you some Vegemite. I put it on everything for a few days. No eating spoonfuls like reckless eating. Well, okay, so that's the difference between reckless eating and us here. Uh, even when when we have Matt on the show or I'm on you know Matt's show, is that what reckless eating does is they'll eat condiments, right? They'll eat you know dry mustard and 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 spoonfuls of Vegemite, and that's not how it's meant to be eaten, right? So here on the show, we'll cook. Sometimes we'll make something up. Sometimes we'll you know we'll invent something if um, if it doesn't exist or you know if it doesn't exist. But we try to cook stuff and we try to you know do preparations that 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 somebody would actually do. Like I would I would say uh, I don't know if you guys saw the episode that we did a couple of weeks ago where we did the um, the pickle whale fighting the hot dog squids in gelatin right so that was kind of a mashup of some other things that i've seen online and that's not something that somebody eats somewhere but you know but we cooked something we prepared something and uh and we did it so we don't you know we don't eat spoonfuls of stuff like they do at reckless eating but you know that's that's their gig and this is our gig yeah. have you tried beef bone marrow soup I have tried beef bone marrow, like right out of the bone, but I'm not never in a soup. But I imagine I love the taste of it. It's like uh, uh, I don't know. How, I really don't know how to describe it, but I love it. Yeah, it's very savory. Um, but um, but never had it in a soup. So yeah, uh, love to suck that uh, out of the bones. Absolutely, absolutely. That was me. 
which was uh, Ryan. I'm sorry. Which was you? You were the one. You were the one that su- suggested the Julian Dutch apple with cheddar cheese. I think. And if we were talking about something else, let me know. Uh, how did you meet Reckless Eating? I met. Uh, I met them formally at a event that they had at uh, the YouTube space in Los Angeles. So we went down there. We started talking with them, and then we we kind of agreed that we have a lot of similarities. And so, um, so we started doing more and more things together. Um, Jeff Fu was the one that kind of kind of put those th- two things together because Jeff Fu was. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what capacity he was with Reckless Eating, but he was producing trippy food. So, uh, so Jeff Wu was doing a little bit, a little bit of both, and uh, we we kind of came together at the uh, YouTube space in LA. Uh, I don't recall how long ago that was, but the channel was was already started, and I think we're about five years old now. We watched a few. You had long hair. I had long hair and a mustache and a serious '70s mustache. Yes. Um, what did you think of the music, Janice? Did you like it? Because that that was all, like our original mu- material. Do twenty dollar challenges? Yeah, I uh, I've got to figure out what what to do for a twenty dollar challenge. Uh, so maybe uh, like hot peppers, uh, I have a certain tolerance for up to a certain point, and so maybe we can maybe we can add in like a hot pepper, like something really really hot, you know, like a ghost pepper or something like that. We could do that. Um, your entertainment is priceless. Do Teespring for merch? Oh yeah. Okay, well, I'll look into that. Thank you very much. I will. I will definitely do, uh, look into that. Do you like to eat the Brazilian spit roasted meat on a stick? Those are crazy greasy. Been to one of those expensive. Uh, yes and no. So I do like them. I do enjoy them, and I do enjoy the variety of meat they have. But to me, it's just kind of like a hey, you, you roasted meat on a spit. That's nice, right? And I'm not saying I don't like it. What I'm saying is, like as far as Brazilian goes, I like the other Brazilian dishes like feijoada. Um, you know, and uh, the hamburguesa and things like that. So I, I like the I like the the more traditional like uh, uh, Brazilian dishes. But uh, but I hey I, I love me a good churrascaria. I love me a good churrascaria. Yeah. Under the sea, hot dog, squid, and whale was amazing. Yeah, that was fun. That was fun to do. And and it's like if you have kids, especially now with coronavirus, where you're stuck in the house with the kids and everything, that's a fun project for them to do. Of course, you have to wait several hours before you can actually eat it. I think I waited like I ate it the next day. But uh, but yeah, fun project for kids. And if you know if they don't like one of the flavors in there, just change it up. You know, use carrots or you know something else. Yeah. Uh, Suggesting I even tried to get Matt to urge you on. He flat said nope. To urge me on, to urge me on to what though? Um, hmm. What would Matt not urge me on on? He's pretty good about that. He's pretty good at at, at getting me to get out of my comfort zone. And I, I try to get him out of his. His is pickles, by the way. Uh, I miss Jeff Fu. I miss Jeff Fu too. Uh, I have not seen him since this whole coronavirus thing started. After this is, we're going to have to kind of go crazy again. So there's a few places that he and I like to go, um, and nothing, nothing, you know, trippy or crazy or anything. But uh, places that had, uh, you know, good like all you can eat stuff. I anticipate that like a lot of the um, buffets are going to kind of die. They're just not going to come back unless they change their unless they change their their method right i mean you're not going to be able to go up to the thing with the sneeze shields and be be able to load up your plate anymore um what i think they'll probably do is like maybe put like a glass shield along the whole thing and then somebody behind there with like a mask and gloves on it'll say like what do you want you'll point to something and they'll put it on the plate and then you pick it up down the end i think that's the only way that a buffet is going to survive i don't i don't see the like those vegas buffets i don't see them surviving unless they change it up <clears throat> I watch all the YouTubers. I watch some of them. Uh, I do watch some of them. Um, so I'm going to have to check out more. Do you know about Ra- Ra- I think you, you said Rain, but I think you mean Raina. She's a Vietnamese American woman who likes to do competition eating. She's been on YouTube too. I know she's been on YouTube because she's been on Trippy Food and I've been on hers. So um, yeah, uh, check out. Uh, I think if you go to our you know, our, our main page with all our videos on it and you search for her name, I think you'll, you'll find some videos that we did. We did, uh, um, we did this, uh, son, uh, this Sonoran restaurant that does this big Sonoran hot dog. What did we do? We didn't do the Sonoran hot dog with her. I did something else. I can't remember. Um, oh no, no, we challenged her. So it was me and Matt and, um, I can't remember who else it was. Then we challenged her to eat one of these 
I think it was like a nine pound burrito and she ate one and we, we split it into three. So we did that with her. We did the museum of museum of disgusting food. We did that with Raina. Uh, and then we did uh, this hot chicken place uh, nearby. I can't remember the name of the hot chicken place. Anything, but we did that with her as well. So yeah, yeah. Check it out. Uh, I'm on some of her videos. She's on some of my videos. So yeah, love Raina. Um, I liked it. You have a pleasant voice. Oh, thank you. Uh, if I guess if you're trying to do hard rock, pleasant voice is not a good thing necessarily, but if you enjoyed it, that is the important thing. Uh, Matt Stoney is another competition eater. Uh, I think he went up against Joey Chestnut for hot dog competitions at Nathan's. I think he did as well. Uh, Matt Stoney is a monster. He is not as crazy as, uh, what is her name? Help me out. Everybody knows her. I have, um, Hmm. I follow her. She follows me. I can't remember her name. I'm Mo thank you. Pork chop is fresh. You're absolutely right. Molly Schoeler. Molly Schoeler is a monster. She's an absolute monster. So if you're familiar with the big Texan in Amarillo, Texas, it's a place that's been there forever and they have a five pound steak. And if you finish the five pound steak it, within an hour, you don't have to pay for it. Right. It's expensive if you do have to pay for it, but if you finish it within an hour, uh, you don't have to pay for it. And that means you can't get up off the table. You can't vomit. If you vomit, you lose. Um, I think they have a couple of other restrictions too. And you also have to eat everything else that's on the plate. So there's like a salad, a roll, and something else too. So anyways, Molly goes in there and Molly goes, give me one of those. And then she starts to like, I don't know if you've ever watched a snake eat, but she eats like a snake. So basically she's just had, she picks up the steak in her hands and she's like, And she's just like, this, the steak is disappearing. into The entire steak is just disappearing into her mouth. And then she finishes everything on the plate. And then she goes, give me another one. So they brought her out another one, plate, the, the plate with a steak and all, all the other stuff on it. And she you know, does the whole snake thing and, and, eat, and eats the steak and finishes everything on. She finishes two of them. She didn't ask for a third one, but she did finish the two of those. Now, they give you an hour to finish that. She did it in about 15 minutes. So, yeah, Molly's a monster. Molly is a, an absolute monster. I love Molly. Uh, you know, yeah, I know. I I do know Raina. I haven't done anything with her in a long in a long time, but hopefully we'll we'll after this is all over, we'll do some more stuff with her. Um, we did we did stuff at the same time as her, but we maybe not necessarily. So uh, uh, I did a dirt dog episode with Reckless Eating, and uh, and at that uh, while we were filming that episode, Raina was doing her own episode inside. So, you know, we were kind of there at the same time, but just doing separate episodes. He was being respectful. I think he inferred that you should do hot and really nasty challenges, which he thought would be out of character. Well, not necessarily, not necessarily out of character, right? So the hot challenges are not out of character for me because um, <laughs> you guys – Check out the episode where I tried to do uh, remedies for the uh, Carolina Reaper. So, you know, I did the episode, right? So it's not really out of character for me to do something hot like that. Uh, it's not fun, but it's not out of character for me to do that. And then as far as the discussing things like Marmite and, and the Silkworm Pupa, those are those are like my kryptonite. I, I've, I've freely admitted that. So, you know, um, so yeah, we could, we'll figure something out. We'll figure something out. And um and I'll uh, and I'll talk to Matt and uh, and see what Matt recommends. It, it, like I, like I said, it's not going to be crazy stuff like Matt does, and I'm certainly not going to do a four local uh, a chug because you know then then my live stream will be about three minutes long, or either that or you'll just be looking at the background while I'm on the floor. So I'm I'm pretty much a lightweight. So uh, uh, Saturday night beer night is about like the most I can do is like one beer, and that one is like what did I say nine point three or something? So that's going to be yeah, that's going to be. Psh would you ever do wing challenges like the Nuff? Um, I would do wing challenges like the Nuff, but I wouldn't do the same kinds of wing challenges he does. Like, So I would go to a place that has hot wings, and I would do that challenge. I would eat the hot wings. But he he puts like like extract and, and, and other stuff on top of it. I wouldn't do that. But I would go to a place that does a hot wing challenge and eat the wings the way they prepare them without putting anything else, you know, additional on them and everything. He has to kick it up because, you know, he has a higher tolerance, obviously. So, uh, so yeah, um, more power to him and everything. But uh, um, I'm trying to think if we ever got him in an episode. We did do an episode with him, and I think that one might have already aired. 
uh, because we were at this uh, this big party where he was um, he was there, and we did an episode with him there. And he was also at the uh, the one that with Reina. He did he did I think I th- I want to say it was a wing challenge there at that Sonoran restaurant. Um, but he was there as well. So uh, yeah, great guy. Love his stuff. Love what he does. I've seen the big Texan on man versus food. Yeah, it's been on everything. You know, it's probably been in movies as well. Um, amazing Molly. Raina and Molly have beef. Um, is that like it's like having balls, but not not in the figurative genitalia sense? I th- and if that's what you what you're referring to, yeah, I I agree. Both of them, hardcore. Although although uh, I think Molly has a higher level for pain than uh, Raina does because like the, like I said, that hot chicken that we did uh, that took her like she took one of the there were like the chicken, the nuggets, and and one out of three were like really, really hot. And she got one and she had to get up and leave the table. So uh, I think Molly probably would have like persevered. Um, but, you know, I, I love working with both of them. I, I haven't I actually worked with Molly yet. Uh, I'm trying to think of a, of a case of where that would be appropriate to work with, Mo- with Molly because she's just – she's just ingesting everything, right? So um, – I don't know. Uh, I would love to work with her, but I, I just don't see where we kind of do the same thing where that would work. Four no four loco is a no go. Yeah, it's a no go for me too, Ryan. Ten dollar food review. Um, we did uh, dollar dining, which was food from the dollar store. Uh, we could do something like that again, unless you're thinking of like you know fast food that's cheap. But yeah, we could do a, de- a ten dollar f- food review and everything, and to get to get the stuff at the um, at the uh, dollar store i think would be more interesting so we did a few dollar store episodes we did a we did an episode with dollar wine one dollar wine we did uh, uh one episode with dollar food which was i think the cheat the cheeseburger that you eat up in the microwave we did that we did um the uh larry the cable guy um chicken and biscuits or something like that something along those lines we did that so yeah we've done a few of those and oh and we did the um how can I forget that? We did we did the um, the dollar dollar store steak, which was hor- horrific, absolutely horrific. Yeah, yeah, we can do some more. We'll do some more of those. I like normal foods. My number one all time food is peanut butter and bacon sandwiches. Yeah, peanut butter and bacon. They they go so Skippy peanut butter a long time ago, and this is longer than most of you have been on Earth. But uh, a long time ago, they used to make peanut butter that had bits of bacon in it. Uh, what do they call that? Um, Smoky crisps. They called them smoky crisps, but it was little pieces of bacon that they put. Maybe it wasn't bacon. Maybe maybe it was plastic. <clears throat> but they used to put it in the Skippy peanut butter. So yeah, bacon and peanut butter. Uh, uh, so um, Killer Burger in Portland, Oregon, they do a um, peanut butter and pickle burger. So uh, and they put bacon on all their burgers. So it's peanut butter, pickles, bacon on a burger, and that sounds crazy, but it works really really well. Peanut butter and meat actually works really well because if you think about it, it's what's the difference between that and like a satay, sat, uh, Thai satay sauce? Really, there's not much at all. I watched Halloween the other week. My Halloween? Oh, the movie Halloween the other week. And for the third time watching your live stream, I thought how scary it would be if the closet doors behind you opened slowly and Michael Myers slowly walked out. That would only be scary if I didn't know that, you know, and then like like you guys see it and I don't. And you can't. I can't hear your voices, so you'd be like, Val, get out of the room. Val, get out of the and I wouldn't be able to hear you. And you know, yeah, that would be scary. That would be fun. I'd have to change, I'd have to work on the lighting though. Maybe a like a red light, you know, or a black light. That would be cool too. Yeah. Um subs pay 10 bucks for you to do a food review. Hmm. That'd be interesting. 10 bucks to do a food review. And it's, oh, so so that would be they pay 10 bucks and then they tell me what food they want me to review, and then I do a review, right? Yeah, we could do that too. I think that's what you mean. If not, if not, let me know. But I, but yeah, we could do that. Dollar score store ice cream is so good. Arctic iron, orange sherbet. Hmm. Which uh, which particular like which particular brand um, or like which particular dollar store? I was a dollar store today. I picked up a few things, and we'll eat these a little later. So we have um, these, which are. Check, check, checks, checks, mix. That's hard to say. Checks mix maxed um, flavor blasted dill pickle checks pieces, spicy checks mix. Checks. 
I don't know. I can't say Chex Mix. Spi so it's spicy dill Chex Mix, and they're like, like there's a picture of a uh, of a pickle catching fire. So we'll try those. Um, somebody remind me who you were. I think it was last week. We were talking about pretzels, and we were talking about pretzel balls. Like, oh, too bad they don't have pretzel balls, and they have pretzel balls. So I got pretzel balls. So we will we'll try these pretzel balls. And I got this. I didn't even know what the hell this is. It is uh, powder candy, and it's it's in little carrots. So I don't know if it's carrot flavored candy. I don't know what, the, what kind of candy it is, but there each one is in is in a little a little carrot, a little plastic carrot. So. I'm curious about this. That's interesting. And then we have our yeah, – is it time to open the beer? Should we open our beer yet? Do you guys have something to drink as well? Would you really crack one open? Um, you know, and those of you who don't drink, you know, obviously, you know, maybe a nice soft drink, maybe a nice coffee. Yeah, to open them up. <clears throat> Raina blocked Molly on social media. Molly said something. Yeah, I think there was some sort of – not a – not a healthy competition between them, but some sort of other kind of competition between them. So there was like a feud. There was a feud going on between them. I don't know anything about it, but uh, but yeah, I'd heard something like that. There's a dollar store here in Alhambra, California. I'm sorry, Alhambra, California, too. It is next to the O O O O'Reilly Auto Parts store. Auto Parts. Um, yeah, there's a dollar store everywhere. And there's different kinds of dollar store. <clears throat> I go to the 99 cent. I think it's 99 cents only. Is that what they call that? Maybe, but it's not 99 cents only anymore. So some things are more expensive. I go to that one and then dollar general, go to dollar general every once in a while. And then depending on where you live, like up in Canada, I know they have Dollarama and it's the same kind of thing, but uh, that's always a fun place to like, if you're into trippy food, if you're into unusual food, that's always a fun place to just kind of walk through and go, Oh, what is that? Oh, that's like, I've never seen that before. Yeah, try that. Uh, they they do have some frightening stuff too, like like um, their cold cuts, like the ham and the cheese that they have. It just looks really scary. Uh, but you know, but we, we'll do that. We'll we'll do that for the uh, the ten dollar meal. So uh, yeah, I agree. We should do a ten dollar meal thing. Uh, I have my Dole pineapple juice. That works. That, that absolutely works. So if you're going to open that, we'll open this. Yeti Imperial Stout, and I have my mug because you guys can't see it, right? You can't see it in that can. I can drink it out of the can, but then you guys can't see what it looks like and everything. So I got I got my mug. And by the way, this is a dollar store mug. So if you go to the dollar store, they have these for a buck. Nice big mug, and these are great for beer floats. If you've never had a beer float, you you owe it to yourself to make a beer float. I recommend like if you like the fruitier flavors, I recommend maybe like a fruity IPA, but maybe not something really bitter. Um, and then go with like, uh, uh, you know, maybe a nutty flavored ice cream, like pistachio ice cream. Um, but my preference is using stouts and porters and those are sweet, strong, uh, thick. They have some coffee and chocolate notes and everything. So, uh, vanilla, you know, just plain vanilla ice cream is good. Um, uh, if you want to use coffee ice cream, that's always good or chocolate ice cream. Those are good for a, for a beer float with a stout or a porter. I like beer floats, ice cream sundaes. Yeah, they're the best. They're, they're, they are the best. Uh, go to Dollar Tree. Everything is actually a dollar. Yeah. I haven't been to a Dollar Tree. I know there's some around here. I haven't seen them locally. Uh, but I used to go to Dollar Tree religiously when I lived in Portland. Ah, that satisfying sound. That smells like beer. I was going to say, let's see if I can pour this without getting it all over the place. I cannot. So I have dribble, dribbled this all over the desk. I was never a bartender, so I never got the hang of this. My daughter, Julie, who you've seen on a few episodes, she, had, she was a bartender at one point in time, so she's really good at pouring. I am not. Look at that. I got like half a mug of foam. Did not know beer floats existed. Yeah, they were a thing for a while about, uh, I don't know, maybe maybe about 10 years ago people were doing them. Um, but it, it didn't really catch on. But I, I don't know why because they were really, really, they were really good. I love a beer float every once in a while. Oh, um, if you watch our episode where we did the, um, the Narragansett Autocrat Coffee Milk Stout. 
you watched that episode, and that was Julie was in that episode as well. We did a we did a beer float with the uh, coffee milk stout. I think we used uh, Hoodsy Cup, which is Hood Milk's ice cream. I think we put that in there, but uh, but we made a beer float from that. And that was really good. Fresh on tap, the best beer has the foam. Yeah, I like the taste of the foam. It, it's an it's another dimension, right? I mean, you drink beer, that's fine, but. Uh, and look at look at this. It's almost is the foam itself is really dark. You see that? I'm not going to tilt it because then you know that'll go over the keyboard. So I'm not going to do that. All right, there we go. So again, uh, this is an imperial stout. It is nine point three. I think was nine point nine point three and nine point five. Nine point five. From uh, Great Divide Brewery, Great Divide Brewing Company in uh, Denver, Colorado. Rocky Mountain High. Here we go. I like the foam. That's all I got in that in that last mouthful was just the foam. But I like it. A lot of people try to avoid the foam. But I like the foam. Mmm. That is really good. There's kind of a, I don't want to say grainy because that's a texture and there's no, there's no texture to this, but there's kind of a, I don't know, like almost a graham crackery kind of flavor to this. Um, it doesn't really have, um, it maybe has like a little bit of a bitter coffee taste and not so much of the chocolate taste that sometimes you do get from stouts. Um, that's a nice stout. And because maybe because it has a 9.5 alcohol content, it has that kind of, it does have a little bit of an alcoholic kick to it. So that's a nice stout. I'm going to be sipping this because I'm a lightweight and, and I have to know how to press buttons and I have to know how to be able to read to respond to you guys and everything. I kind of, I kind of wish that I could hear you guys, you know, so we could do like a, you know, one-on-one -on -one with voices and everything else like that. But you know, it's, a little bit difficult to do uh, this way. So we'll have to do it this way for now. Mm. What part of Portland did I live in? Well, um, I lived most, uh, uh, I lived in three different places while I was up there. So I, I started off in Beaverton. And I just love saying that, Beaverton. Uh, I lived in Beaverton. Uh, and then I got a house in, uh, what did they call that area? Garden Home. In the Garden Home area of Portland. I had a house in Garden Home area. And then after that, I moved back to Beaverton. I lived in Beaverton for like six months before I moved, moved back to the LA area. So, yeah, I mean, I love, I absolutely love Portland. Uh, be and it's, it's funny because um, Beaverton seems to have even more food options. I mean, Portland has a lot of food options, but they're all, they're way spread out. Where Whereas Beaverton, you know, in a small area has a lot more <clears throat> clustered food options. And uh, uh, so the largest food cart pod in the United States used to be the Alder Street food cart pod, which was downtown Portland. And then they closed that because they're going to build a high rise hotel. Um, and so that they closed that and they, all those carts scattered to the wind. So currently I believe the largest food cart pod is now in Beaverton, Oregon, which is the, um, what is it? Bee Gees, Bee Gees food cartel. BG's food cartel. And they have a lot of interesting ones. Unfortunately, they, they have a lot of turnover. And so, like, you just get used to something. There was a Bosnian truck that was amazing. They're gone. Um, there was a, a Guamanian truck uh, cart that was uh, one of my favorites. And they're gone. So, uh, so you get used to something and they, and they go away. But, uh, but they always have a, a, they have a really good variety there. What's your favorite beer food you eat with oh yeah oh so i see so you're saying like what do you like to pair with a beer when you're eating a bear a, a beer a bear Ooh, that sounds good uh pairing my beer with a bear um <clears throat> what is my favorite um what do i oh beer and hot dogs uh that's just that's just me beer and hot dogs you know uh although although it depends on the beer like i don't i don't know that i would have a stout with hot dogs a stout doesn't um doesn't really do that for me. So, so honestly, 
uh, absolutely, to be honest with you, like when I'm drinking stouts and porters, I'm more inclined to eat dessert with that. Because I don't, it's just to me, uh, stouts and porters, even though they're strong, muy fuerte, they also, um, they also kind of lend themselves more to like desserty kind of stuff. So, yeah, like cake, cake and, and, and stout. Yeah. So, desserty kind of stuff. Yeah. I think maybe that's what I pair, pair uh, stouts and porters with the most. Uh, right drink as relaxed a Saturday afternoon. Yeah. This is, this is the best for a Saturday afternoon. And I'm going to be sipping this. Because I'm a lightweight. Uh, you can set up a stream Discord. It's super easy. I will have to look into that. And maybe we won't do that today, but maybe I will look into that. And maybe in the next time, maybe on the next uh, the next stream, next week, and maybe we'll do that. Uh, beer and dog sounds good. Beer and dog is good. You can't go wrong with that. It's like, uh, that's America right there. Um, let's try our beef stew. Because that's been sitting there for a while. It hasn't coagulated yet. But let's go ahead and try that. So for those who weren't here when we first came in, that is our uh, our Russian beef stew our, uh, or our Eastern European uh, beef stew from Slavos Meats, our tush, Tushanka. Our tushanka. So let's go ahead and, and try that. It looks good. Cheers. Flavor-wise, it's pretty good. Texture-wise, it's strange. It just melts. It's like a, it's like a really melty brisket. Flavor-wise, uh, if you've ever had cream chip beef on toast, picture that like without the cream. It's that 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 sort of flavor profile. It's like the texture of tuna fish. Hmm. Yeah. Not bad at all for something that came out of a can. I might keep eating this. I know that's annoying to you. I hope some, like, uh, I don't know if you are familiar with, what is the, what is the word? Um, there is a word for it, and it is called... Um, see, I shouldn't have started sipping that beer already. Um, misophonia is what it's called. And misophonia is a disorder, if you want to call it that. Yeah, I'm not, not trying to be mean, but it is a, is a, it is a psychological disorder uh, that certain sounds, especially chewing and crunching sounds, drive you nuts. So, um, so if you have misophonia and me chewing this and eating this on... Uh, you know, into the microphone and everything might drive you nuts. So if so, let me know and I'll and I'll tone it down or I'll swing the mic up. That's enough for now. You can have beef stew without potatoes and peas and carrots. Yeah, I agree. But you know, in Russia, obviously they don't agree. They think differently. So it's a canned Russian thing. It was pretty good. I like beef stew in a can. I like dinty moors. I haven't had dinty moors in decades. It's been so long since I had dinty moors. Do you guys think dinty doing a can of dinty moors beef stew would be a good episode? Or maybe doing some different canned beefs, beef stews? I did do a uh, dehydrated beef stew episode. So uh, that was a couple of years ago. So check it out. I think if you find it, it's a dehydrated beef stew thing and you pour hot water in it and then you eat it and everything. But that, and that did have peas and carrots and potatoes in it. Thumbs up for the beer. Yes, absolutely. I'm sorry about that. Yes, thumbs. this one gets a big thumbs up for me. Uh, this one goes onto my list of uh, beers that I would definitely have again. So um, uh, Great Divide Brewing Company from Denver, Colorado. Their Yeti Imperial Stout. Big thumbs up. I eat those all the time when I'm not cooking or buying. Oh, okay. Different canned products. Yeah. Somebody suggested potted meat. And I, we might have done potted meat, but not known that it was called potted meat. So uh, if, if you guys make suggestions. Also, um, 
if um, once we do the streams, you can leave comments on the on the streams and everything. So you know, if you have, if I'm asking a question or something, and you think about it afterwards, just put the comment down there, and, and we'll pick up on it. So uh, so yeah, if you have some ideas of of potted meats, um, if you look at the uh, the thumbnail that we did, there's our our can of um, pumpkin spice spam. I guess that could that could be uh, considered a canned meat. But uh, yeah, let us know like which ones you'd like us to try, and, and we'll give them a shot. Or we'll try to find some unusual ones that maybe people haven't seen. Favorite cereal? You guys are gonna laugh. Shredded wheat. Shredded wheat's my favorite cereal. I don't know why. It's just it's just like it's it's a completely, absolutely, completely different texture. You get that that biscuit that's about that big, and you just like it's it's just a completely different texture. I, there's something I just love about shredded wheat. I don't I don't know what it is. Um, the bite size ones are nice too. I like the bite size one, but I like the full size shredded wheat. I really do like that. That's my favorite. Go figure. Mm. I'm joining you with a sipping glass of good mezcal. Oh, yeah, mezcal. Mezcal is the best. Ha uh, Stoner Kitchen, have you ever had the scorpion mezcal? So they basically take – they. the thing is mezcal comes from Mexico. But for the scorpion mezcal, they use an emperor scorpion, which does not come from Mexico. It's the you know the big black ones that they use for the movies because they're relatively docile. People let them crawl on them and everything, and they pretend to be scared, but they're actually relatively docile. But they stick one of those in the bottle of mezcal. Now, I've eaten one before. I've eaten the 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 scorpion from the bottom of the bottle of mezcal because I wanted to see what it tasted like, and that's a bad mistake. I love scorpion. I love uh, like uh, uh, fried. Uh, or roasted scorpion. I love the taste of that. It's crunchy. It almost has like a shrimp kind of taste to it. But in the bottom of the, the bottom of mezcal, they just drop it in. They don't cook it. They just drop it in the bottom of mezcal. So what happens is the um, <clears throat> the scorpion absorbs most of the bad taste of the mezcal, and then in it has that hard shell. So like if you've ever had steamed shrimp or boiled shrimp and you have to peel that shell off and if you get a piece of the shell in your mouth you're chewing it for about an hour and a half because it's it's like plastic it's like trying to eat plastic well scorpion's the same thing so when they stick it in that bottle the shell softens a little bit but it's still like eating a piece of plastic so you decide to take a bite of that scorpion you're getting the goopy inside that that is not cooked you're getting the the that the, the plat hard plastic shell and you're getting the worst of the mezcal that was absorbed by it. So I advise if you have if you have an opportunity to do that, don't do that. Uh, and uh, yeah, I made that mistake once, so I won't make it again. Uh, spam is good. I love spam. I actually do. Uh, Hormel beef hash. I I actually like Hormel's be uh, uh, corned beef hash. I do. I'll have that every every yeah maybe every six months or so. Just make that up for breakfast. It's good. Thumbs up for the Sioux. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. It is. It's it's weird. Um, but it, it, ta it's tasty. It doesn't, it's not off putting as far as the taste goes. When you first comes out of the can, it's scary looking. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but, uh, but taste wise, really good. Uh, texture wise, really good. Just kind of melts in your mouth. Um, I, I was a little bit disappointed because they said stew. So I was expecting vegetables and stuff in it and they're not in there, but, uh, but yeah, thumbs up for me. Uh, milk, uh, milk soaks into the squall. Oh yeah. You're talking about the, um, um, you're talking about the 9.5 alcohol. You're talking about the uh, shredded wheat. And yeah, I agree with you. The milk does does soak it up in, uh, uh, for a while. The thing is to put milk on it and then to eat it while it's still crunchy. I think that's... that's uh, uh, One of my least favorite is Captain Crunch. And the reason I don't like Captain Crunch is like eating broken glass. Because it, it just chews up the, the whole inside of your mouth. Uh, Captain Crunch. I don't know why they do that. That's Wow, uh, you're almost on the same level as Andrew Zimmern, Weird Foods. Uh, in some ways, and in some ways, I'm at a higher level than Andrew Zimmern, and I'll tell you why. Andrew Zimmern won't eat spam. It's not that he doesn't like it. He won't eat it. And he won't eat walnuts. He doesn't like walnuts. And he can't eat durian. So, like, and if you've ever seen any of the episodes where he's eating durian, he puts it in his mouth and he immediately spits it out. He can't. I don't know if he can't get past the smell, but he can't eat durian. And I love durian. And uh, I don't. And if you can. If you want to check it out, we actually did. An, I had actually did an episode with uh, with Andrews. I was on Bizarre Foods. Uh, they did. Um, if you look at look for the um, Hidden LA, the Hidden LA episode, uh, me and Eddie Lynn took Andrew Zimmern out 
hunting grunion, fishing grunion, and then we took them back and fried them up and ate them and everything. So I was actually on Bizarre Foods, and, and Andrew's a great guy to work with. He's uh, like, uh, you know, you, you see some people and you and you think, he'd be a good guy to work with. Andrew Zimmer was a great guy to work with. Uh, Adam Richmond. Uh, I didn't work with Adam Richmond from Man vs. Food, but I met him and I talked with him and everything. Really great guy. Great guy to work with. I, I, I would like to meet uh, Guy Fieri. Guy Fieri strikes me as the kind of guy that you would like to have a uh, Yeti stout with. Yes, I've had the scorpion, but right now I'm drinking a numbered bottle I had in reserve. There you go. Mm, that must be very, very nice. Uh, uh, put put the uh, the brand and um, and also you know give a, a, at least a little review on on how you like it as as compared to other mezcals. I like Frosted Flakes. It's the original Tiger Queen. Well, it's that secret frosting that makes them great. Um, yeah, you can't you can't mess with Frosted Flakes. There, uh, to me, uh, over the years, I've kind of gotten away from sugary things, and I don't really like sugary things anymore. But when I was a kid, I used to like Frosted Flakes. Yeah. So yeah, I see that. I enjoy canned products. No, yeah. I do some. Uh, except uh, we did an episode. I think it's called Loma Linda. Loma Linda is the brand, and they do a vegan hot dog in a can. Those weren't good, uh, but a lot. Most of the other stuff I've had in a can have been has actually turned out to be pretty good. Uh, chicken in a can. Uh, check out the chicken in a can episode. Whole chicken in a can. That was fun. Uh, guy is a nice guy. I'm, I'll bet he is. I'm sure he is. And not only is he a nice guy, but he is also a very uh, generous person and takes care of people. You know, the thing, just, just what he does for these little mom and pop places to put them on the map and everything. It's like that alone. He's awesome about, but then he does, he does like fundraising things and um, gives a lot of money to charity and everything. Yeah. Guy fear. I have no idea why guy fear, maybe because of the way he looks, right. He looks like some guy like might be hanging out at a NASCAR race or anything with the glasses on the back of his head and the spiky hair and the, you know, the, whatever the flame shirts and stuff like that. And so, yeah, so some people can laugh at that. You know, maybe they look, look down on him because he's kind of blue collar, but that's the thing that's lovable about him is that you would, you would want to hang out with this guy and have a drink with him. And he'd be fun to, to have a drink with, and he does good things for people. So um, if you go by that, that um, New York times, uh, what was his name? Um, the New York times uh, reviewer, food reviewer. I can't recall his name offhand. But uh, he did a hatchet job on you know, Guy Fieri's restaurant in New York City, and it's like, why would you review? You you do you do like like Michelin star places. Why would you review Guy Fieri's restaurant? Guy, you know it's going to be a blue collar place. You know that that's what it's going to be like. It's like that's like if 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 you know James Beard or or uh, Jonathan Gold decided one day that they wanted to review uh, Fridays or uh, Chili's. You know, it's ridiculous. So yeah. Guy Fieri gets my thumbs up. Uh, have you seen Jadubi Dubs YouTube parody of Guy Fieri's dinners, drive-throughs, and dives? No, but I'll have to check that out. Like, I love parody uh, as long as it's you know it's irreverent. As they're not, they're not like trashing him. You know, if they're just making fun of him and everything. You know, I think even Guy Fieri would like that. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. You want dark comedy? Watch Tony is back. Okay. Uh, Tony is back is Tony the T oh Tony the Tiger dark comedy oh oh is the kind of like a John Krikfluski kind of thing like like a Ren and Stimpy kind of version of Tony the Tiger that would be pretty funny or like or like Tony the Tiger started eating people that would be funny uh, guy makes food eating fun and creative yeah he does uh, there's I, I I can't find anything bad to say about Guy Fieri I mean really I would love to get Guy Fieri on the show if any of you guys know Guy Fieri ask him Say Val would really like you to come on the show. I can't pay him a lot of money, but I would love to have him on the show. Uh, they called me Iron Chef Trailer Park. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I think a Denny more beef stew would be it would be great. I grew up in the hood, and we would doctor that stuff up into something special. Ryan, uh, send me some suggestions on how you would doctor that up, and we'll put it in the episode. Yeah, we'll definitely do that. Tony the Tiger is trying to help the kids from those commercials, and the kids are all grown ups now. That's funny. That does sound like a that does sound like a funny thing. All right, shall we open something else? Should we go ahead and open something else? Let's try. Um, let's try these. Let's try the uh, the maxed Chex Mix spicy dills. Gonna open it from the bottom because that's how we roll here. I don't think I have to explain why, do I? 
Maybe I do. All right, here we go. Oh, that's crunchy. If you got misophonia, you're hating me. Oh, that's weird. That's weird. It's like the approximation of dill pickles, but not dill pickle. And then there's that heat. That was weird. Okay, so you know what? I do I do kind of get the I do kind of get the dill pickle thing. Uh, they are right. It is spicy. So I'm going to give them a thumbs in the middle because they're honest and they, they deliver on what they promise. I'm not crazy about the flavor. So that's why it says thumbs in the middle and, and not up. And But it doesn't suck, which is why it's not going to get a thumbs down. So, yeah, I might snack on those later. I don't know. Uh, have you ever reviewed MREs? Yes, Stoner Kitchen, I have reviewed MREs. Um. I think maybe if you go to uh, if you go to our page and you do search for MRE, it'll come up. But we did uh, we did do an MRE. Um, it was um, I think it was like Southwest Chicken or something like that. And it was actually pretty good. I was actually shocked that it was as good as it was. And I think it was about three years old. Mm. The one with the hooker is funny, and the guys buy her riding the pony. Oh, I'm I'm I am now I'm going to definitely check that out. What channel is that on? Did you did you put that on there? Is that YouTube? I have to check. I'm definitely gonna have to check that out. There's usually a reason why items end up in the dollar store. Yes, Janice, you're absolutely correct. Now I know what that is. But they're lucky. They got a thumbs in the middle. They didn't get a thumbs down. So I use you and we to buy products and save money. Oh, okay. Well, then I will. I will. Um, I don't always put prices on stuff. Um, but, uh, but we're, we're really low end. Like a lot of people have asked me like, um, like, oh, have you ever eaten at this fancy restaurant? And I'm like, I don't eat at fancy restaurants. I, I mean, <clears throat> honestly, there's not a whole lot of right. Now there's, there is an exception to that. I have some friends, uh, that are chefs that are very innovative and they do very, very innovative things. And because they're, they work for high end restaurants, it's going to be a little bit on the inexpensive side, but it's an adventure when you go in there. Uh, and, and you're gonna get, you're gonna have something that you've never had before, which is which is awesome. But you know, like Morton's being as expensive as it is, it's like uh, you're paying a lot of money for like steak and potatoes and salad. I mean, it's just standard. It's standard stuff, right? So why why pay that kind of money? I would much rather spend money on a mom and pop place that's doing unique, original, home cooked food. That's my that's my forte. That's that's what I'm into. And so yeah. I'll recommend that over like a, you know, an, an expensive chain restaurant any day of the week. Like for instance, Fogada Chao. I, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but that's that like really, really high end churrascaria that does the Brazilian food. Yeah, I'm sure it's great. I'm sure, I'm sure it's great. But I prefer the Tabam truck, which is a local LA food truck that does Brazilian food and they're doing like feijoada. It's amazing. It's really amazing. Um, so yeah, that's my, that's my, that's my bag, baby. <clears throat> the channel is Tony is back. Oh, it's a YouTube channel. Tony is back. Okay, I will definitely check that out. I might even subscribe. But it's if it's as funny as you make it sound like it is. Yeah. Uh, do you cook? Stoner Kitchen asks. Yes, Stoner Kitchen. I do cook. Um, I think uh, a lot of the videos I do, uh, I'm cooking in. So uh, we did a video uh, with Matt, <clears throat> with Matt and uh, Majestic where we took one of the McCall's Magazine recipe cards. It, it, this has been on, on the internet a lot. Uh, it's, it's been on Facebook. A lot, a lot of people have been posting this. And it is um, uh, bananas wrapped with ham with hollandaise sauce. And it looks disgusting. I mean, I have to admit, it looks disgusting. And so we cooked that. We made that. Uh, we, did, um, we did milk steak from uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. So we did that for, I think we did that for Reckless, reckless Eating. We did, uh, we cooked that, or I cooked that. So yeah, I, I, uh, a lot of the episodes that I do, um, if I'm making a dish, I'm cooking it myself. Uh, there was that, uh, I'm, I'm going to pronounce it wrong. It's a Persian dish called uh, kalapucha, kalapacha, kalapucha, something like that, uh, which is a lamb's head 
it's usually a lamb's head and feet stewed. Um, and then the meat just falls off the bone and everything. I didn't have a, a lamb's head, so I used the llama's head and I made that and I cooked that dish. So yeah, I do I do a lot of cooking. Um, and and then as far as cooking goes, when I'm not cook, when I'm not doing it for the channel on my own, I'll cook something if it's something un unusual, like uh, like hot dogs. I like hot dogs with brie cheese and seaweed salad. I'm just funny like that, and so you know um, I'll make that my own. Right, Valentino. So, what is your favorite food to cook at home? My favorite food to cook at home. My specialty, I guess, is is what you would call it. I, I like to make homemade spaghetti sauce, but only because my mom taught me how to make that. My mom's Italian American. She taught me how to make that, and so so I uh, occasionally I'll make dishes that that use spaghetti sauce, like uh, American chop suey, things like that. I like I like cooking Italian food. I like making lasagna. Um, I like making tamales. I mean, not tamales. I'm sorry. That's a little bit more work. That's hard work. That's an all day thing. Uh, I like making enchiladas. Um, I like making uh, chicken cordon bleu. I love making chicken cordon bleu. So those are a few things that I like to to make. And that's and usually I make those kind of things when I'm when I'm have when there's a dinner party and you know, people are going to come over to eat and they just they they kind of turn their nose up at the stuff that I eat. So I'll do that. Never knock a dish before you try it. Stoner Kitchen, those are words to live by. Those those should be emblazoned over every doorway. Never knock a dish before you try it. And I did that with my kids. My kids, initially, you know, when they were little, they would say, Dad, what is that? That's gross. And I'm like, oh, I didn't I didn't realize you tried that before. And they said, no, I haven't. I'm like, all right, well, we'll make a deal. <clears throat> you try a bite of that. And if you think it's disgusting, then you can say it's gross. But otherwise, you can't, you can't say it's gross. They go, okay. And they would take a bite of it. And I'd say, what do you think? And they go, Dad, it's good. I'm like, I know it's good. So, uh, so yeah, I completely agree with you. Never knock a dish before you try it. I've made a French dish with salmon bake, salmon bacon. Wow, that sounds interesting. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if that's uh, if that's acceptable in bacon circles, but it sounds interesting. Bake salmon bacon and bananas. Wow, that looked not good, but flavor profile was on point. Yeah, that sounds good. Spaghetti is good. Spaghetti is okay. I like mine al dente. I don't like overcooked like SpaghettiOs. We did a SpaghettiOs episode where I tried to save SpaghettiOs. I couldn't. Um, uh, it's just they boil the crap out of it, and it's just mush. That's terrible. And that's their sauce is like this runny cousin of tomato sauce. It's terrible. Hey Val, do you like curry? Do you cook them? I don't. Um, I don't typically cook curry dishes. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience with it. I would like to expand to do that, but I love I love curry dishes. Uh, as just cooking them, um, I haven't tried that yet. So maybe maybe I'll find an interesting curry dish, uh, something in, you know, like a, an interesting meat to to cook in curry, and uh, and do that as a trippy food episode. I've eaten pig's ears, frog legs, lamb leg, and duck fat, greasy. Yeah. Um, as far as the uh, pig ears go, what presentation? What, uh, what? How are the pig ears done? Because like different cultures do them differently. The Chinese, they do them. There's usually served cold, and they kind of roll them, and then you have that membrane that's in the middle that's kind of you know chewy. Um, I've had uh, pig's ears in Colombia. That's a completely different, um, a, a completely different texture because they're stewed. They're slow, slow cooked in uh, criolla sauce, which is like butter and tomatoes and onion, and it's just slow cooked. So, uh, uh, pig ears, I've had them different ways. Uh, so which way did you have them? Should I email the suggestions out or post them here? Uh, if you're going to post them, post them on the the. Uh, so once the video uh, posts, put them on the put them as a comment on the video, and then you can you can do more and you know stuff like that. So just put it on there, or if you want to email me, val at trippyfood.com, you can do that as well. It was Chinese pig, steamed pig. Yeah, those are the, usually the ones that are rolled up the way the Chinese do it. Brown with soy sauce. Yeah. Uh, crunchy almost. Uh, the thing about pig's ears is uh, I don't know if it has the effect on humans, but if you give like a dog the the, the kind of like, they're kind of like uh, basted and then dr like dried. I don't know if they're dehydrated or baked or whatever, but they give dogs gas. So just be careful of that. Down south, they have pig ear sandwiches with mustard. Mm. Uh, the flavor combination sounds good together. Uh, I'll have to check that out. Uh, I guess the bread's going to be important. What kind of bread they use? Uh, Sky the bike. What type of curry Japanese? Oh, Sky the bike. Oh, see now, Sky the bike. You came into the room. I didn't realize that you were you were new to the room. Welcome. I don't I don't recall seeing you on the list from uh, the last two. So if this is your first um, 
live stream, then welcome. <clears throat> and it looks like uh, you and Janice are having a nice little conversation together. So I'll let you be. More beer. Okay, let's start. I'm not going to eat these on the show. I just have these handy. These are always on my desk because I just love these things. And I don't know if you guys have tried these. So these are uh, from Trader Joe's. They're salt and pe salt and pepper pistachios. That sounds really weird. They taste really good because they have a bite. The problem is that you can you can eat too many of those, and then once you do that, your whole mouth just like it's not like a it's not like a burn, <clears throat> like you're eating a Car Carolina Reaper or anything because it's black pepper. But it has that black pepper burn, and that just stays in your mouth for like, you know, almost an hour if you eat too many of these. But uh, but this is a nice snack. But I, I'm not going to eat them right now, as this is my snack for later. But um, just wanted to show that to you guys. If you want me to eat one, I will. But you know, I eat them all the time. <clears throat> Hi Val, first time from the UK. Sky the bike, you are from the UK. Where in the UK? Uh, I have been to uh, London and Liverpool. I love both. Uh, I specifically love uh, Liverpool. I don't know why. There's just something. Uh, it's very uh, Liverpool. Liverpool is a very blue collar city. I just I love I love Liverpool. But uh, but where 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 are you from, Sky the bike? Let me know. Uh, I'm new to your live chat, Val, but I've commented on your food reviews before. Oh, okay, maybe in a different name uh, because I don't remember seeing Sonic Jet, but that's okay. Um, but welcome, Sonic Jet. Uh, and, and and some people might have been in the uh, might have been watching the streams before and just didn't leave a, a um, chat, you know, something in the chat window. So I just, I don't know that you were here, but, uh, but some people were. Uh, County Durham, Northeast England, Northeast. That way. Oh, I haven't been out that way. I've been to Stonehenge. I've been to Bath. Um, you know, there's fun places to visit. Uh, uh, where is it? Uh, where the, the, the Salisbury, but it's Salisbury as well. But um, but yeah, I love the countryside. I love that. There's it's so old. I, I'll I'll tell you a story. This is fun. Uh, I worked for this company where I had people that worked for me uh, originally in Liverpool, and then we moved the office to Slough, which is every bit as bad as it sounds. Uh, well, I, I I can't say it's bad. It's just kind of like frozen in time from like the late 1960s, uh, early 1970s, and everything, and and it's just not not improved. It's it's not that bad. Anyways, uh, so we were in Slough, and I decided I was going to take them out for lunch. And I said, where do you guys want to go? And they said, well, there's a pizza place in Windsor that we want to go to. And I'm like, okay, great. We'll go to the pizza place in Windsor. I think you can take take a train. They they had cars. I didn't. I don't drive in England. But they had cars. I mean, they had cars, but we took, I think we took the train. Um, and then um, we went to this, this restaurant. Now, the restaurant, the front of the restaurant – faces Windsor Castle. So we are looking at Windsor Castle while we're eating pizza. And I'm in amazement and I'm just going like, my my God, you guys, the, that place is over a thousand years old. And they're like, yeah, big deal. Hey, can we have some more pizza? So, you know, they, they kind of take it for granted because they've been around for a long time. But, you know, when you visit a place like that, that has that kind of history, you know, here, in, like in the LA area, you're lucky if you find anything that's later than the, the you know, the mid to late 1800s, you know, Nothing. There's no sense of nostalgia here. They don't. They don't save things. Um, when I was living in the Boston area, that's different. You know, they have stuff from the 1600s there. But you know, you go to Europe and thousands, you know, thousands of years. Uh, I'm appreciated to the UK for giving the world Carl Pilkington. Hmm. Now, okay, I'm I'm not aware of Carl Pilkington, so I'm going to have to look that one up. Uh, let's try. Uh, you know what? Let's try this. So I have. Cod liver. Ooh, can you see that? No, you can't see that. All right, there we go. Cod liver in own oil, and it's, it's not oil that you own. It's I guess it's in the in the cod's own oil. Uh, so cod liver oil is a, uh, a health thing. I don't know that they do that anymore, but they used to do cod cod liver oil. Maybe it was high in omega three or something. I I'm not sure exactly what the health benefit of cod liver oil was, but this is cod liver. Now I have had monkfish liver before in a sushi bar. Really good. I liked it. I, I have no idea what uh, what this is. This is cheap, and it's cod liver in a can. So we're gonna try this. Yeah, plenty of history value. Yes, absolutely. Um, and and some people just some people just don't have an appreciation for history. But it's like I'm always in awe. Uh, I love history. Was my favorite subject in school. I, I learned most of what I learned about history outside of school because what they taught in school was terrible. But uh, you know, it's just memorizing dates. So I am going to put this 
on these, which are as close as I can figure, called ACMAC. And uh, they are whole wheat flour uh, crackers, uh, whole wheat flour sesame crackers. So I don't know if that's whole wheat sesame or whole, I think wheat is wheat, right? So I think it's whole wheat with sesame. Um, it doesn't look like there's sesame seeds on it or anything. But we're going to use that as our little plate for our cod liver. So let me, oh, look, nice little lines where you can break it off. Oh, that's satisfying. Have any of you guys gotten a chance to look at the thumbnail? Have any guys, you have any questions about any of that stuff? Because there's a lot of stuff there. There's a lot of stuff to take in. Some of the stuff I can't even remember. If you look at the top shelf, there's a rock in the front. I can't remember where I got that. All right, here we go. Cod liver. Ooh, yeah, it's its own oil. Well, but the weird thing is, is like you expect the oil to be kind of like a yellowy color and everything, and this is like clear. It looks—it looks like machine oil, but it's cod liver oil. And I thought this was going to be a solid piece, but there's like little individual pieces. I—I'm uh, going to do this. I'm—I don't—I don't want to hold it up to the camera because it's going to drib dribble oil all over the place. So I will take a picture of it. And I'll try to show that picture to you. Let's see if that works. If you, yeah, be like that. Fine. If you guys can see that, so that's what it looks like. Opened up. Looks like something you found on the bottom of the ocean. Well, let's give this a shot. Uh, where is my biodegradable fork? I got two knives. Oh, it's in my beef stew. Um, I lip, I clean that off with my mouth. Obviously, you know, if I'm, if I'm going to have dinner with you, I'm not going to clean off my utensils with my mouth. This is just, this stuff is floating in there. There's just so much oil. that this is drip that oil is just dripping off there i should have had a plate because this is going to go everywhere okay we got a nice big chunk of cod liver there let's give this a shot try not to make a mess That is soft and squishy. It's like liver jello. It's actually a mild flavor, though. It does taste a little fishy, but it doesn't have that really strong liver taste that, that beef liver or even chicken liver does. And I love chicken liver. Not bad. Yeah, I suppose if it's more like anything, it's more like chicken liver. But like I said, it's mild. It's greasy because it's covered in oil. There's another piece. Weird texture. It's a really, really soft and squishy. It's like um, like pudding. Hmm, not bad. I'm gonna give that a thumbs up. I'll have to get some of those forks. Stoner Kitchen, I got that at, um, I got these a while back at, um, I was going to say Ralph's, but it's not Ralph's, the Kroger store in Oregon, which is uh, Fred Meyer. Got them Fred Meyer. So maybe if you have a local Kroger, Kroger store, they might have that. But any very large supermarket, uh, you know, who would have it is uh, Whole Foods or Sprouts or any of those, you know, those those places that have organic stuff. They would have that. What uh, what oil is it? No, it's it's cod liver oil. It's 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 oil from the cod. So um, because other it doesn't have a it doesn't have like a taste that's uh, that's different than the taste of the liver itself. It, so it, it's the I think the thing said where is that? Its own oil in in own oil meaning it's in the cod's own oil. So that's interesting. Cod liver. Yes. 
Um, it, so yeah, it is cod, uh, it is cod liver oil or cod oil. Uh, maybe, maybe it doesn't, uh, maybe the oil doesn't come from liver, but I think it does because I, I think they used to give cod liver oil to people as not as medicine, but you know, as a tonic, something to make them healthier, more beer. Ah, I would not pair this with cod oil. I mean, cod liver doesn't go. It goes okay with the beef soup. Uh, let's try. Let's see. Um, I'm going to try these. They're Snyder's Rounds. Snyder's is a really popular brand. I'm sure any any grocery store you go to is going to have Snyder's. I haven't seen these before. I've only seen these recently, so I think these are relatively new. And um, this is butter flavor. I think you use butter to make pretzels, anyways. But uh, but they're specifically saying butter flavor, so maybe they're more buttery. I, I wish I could remember, as part of our conversation, what um, what we said would be good if you had pretzel balls or, you know, round pretzels. What would be a good application of that? Uh, if you remember, let me know. Refresh my memory. I, I try to take notes, but I didn't see anything from that. Well, they look like little pretzel balls, right? Let's try these. Favorite beer snack. Um, mm, favorite beer snack. Ah, pretzels. Yeah, pretzels. But uh, the hard pretzels, not the big, the big doughy ones, but the big hard pretzels, the ones that like, you know, those those kind of pretzels, and not 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 the, just the regular thin ones, the big uh, sourdough hard pretzels with beer. Any day of the week. These do have a little more of a buttery taste. And they, they seem to have a thinner shell. So I don't, I mean, I don't know what, what makes a, the shell on a pretzel. But it's softer. It's a softer chew. Pretzels and beer, that's a no-brainer. I'm going to give this a thumbs in the middle. Here's why. Not terrible. It's not... It's not a, a departure from pretzel. Oh, wait, hang on. I'm going to change that. I'm going to go thumbs up. Here's why. Because the more you eat it, the more that butter flavor comes in. And that butter flavor is not in the regular sourdough pretzels. So this is something new. That butter flavor is definitely there. It's nice. I, I would like to see them do like a the, the big hard pretzels with a buttery flavor. That'd be nice too. That's nice. So, uh, yeah, uh, favorite beer snack? We just did it. Pretzels. Those pretzels with some beer, cheese, and mustard. I'm going to have to do beer cheese because I've heard about beer cheese, but I don't think I've ever had it. Well, I'm going to have to do some beer cheese. I don't know if that's, that's not like port wine cheese, right? It's not like cheese made with beer. Mm. I'm going to do, I'm gonna have to check out beer cheese. Let's see. Did we have something left? Yes, we did. You have the weird ass carrots. These are strange. These are really strange. So again, they're plastic carrots, and it says powder candy. I don't think I don't see anything here that says what flavor it is. Um, ingredients: dried glucose syrup, maltodextrin. Citric acid, but that's like lemon juice. Artificial flavor. There's no, there's nothing that has a flavor in there. There's nothing. It, it, they don't name a fruit. They don't name a, you know, animal, vegetable, mineral. I have no idea what 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 flavor this is. This is really weird. This is made by or distributed by Momentum Brands, and the brand is Amos. Amos, Amos, Anus. I love port wine cheese. I love port wine cheese, too. I can't eat a lot of it, though. All right, let's do one of these weird-ass carrots. Oh, those are weird. It's basically a fondue with beer. A fondue with beer in it. Oh, that sounds cool. I guess you have to be careful what kind of beer you put in it, though. It doesn't smell like a carrot. Should we unscrew the top? We do unscrew the top. And it's full of powder. 
hopefully this wasn't something like from a smuggling ring that accidentally got routed to the dollar store, but we'll see. I think what we're going to do is, so there's like a little a little indentation in that cap. I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to put a little bit in that cap, you know, as opposed to tilting the whole thing up and pouring it into my mouth because I have no idea what I'm getting myself into here. Cheers. It tastes like unflavored pixie sticks. So uh, it doesn't have that the, uh, the sourness of pixie, pixie sticks. And it has no flavor. It's like sugar with, uh, with a little bit of cit citr the citric acid, like lemon juice or something. But it doesn't taste lemony, and it doesn't taste like orange. Um, it's just a weird-ass little thing. It's a candy powder um, with no, no discernible flavor. I was gonna, well, you know what? I was gonna give it a thumbs down just be, just on flavor alone, but I'm gonna give it a thumbs in the middle only because that's that kind of creative little thing. I think they missed the boat. I think they should have made carrot flavored powder, uh, candy powder, and that would have been something. But uh, it's flavorless. It's almost flavorless, and um, and yeah, so thumbs in the middle on that. Maybe trending down. Love the chill vibe of the stream. Well, thank you, Stoner Kitchen, and you contribute to that. So, um, you know, I, I, like, I, I like bouncing things off you guys. I like interacting with you guys. So uh, I love it when you guys leave, uh, um, leave stuff in the chat. Now, I know like, like when Matt, when he streams, they, he may get 1,000 people on there at any one given time. And it's almost impossible to follow that. Right now, I can kind of follow what you guys are saying because we have a small group. Like, I don't know if you guys can see it, but right now it looks like I have uh, 11 people on. And, and it's not like a, a, the same 11 people that started with it. It's, you know, some people come, some people come. Oh, now we have 12. So somebody else just joined. Welcome. Hey, when you come into the room, say your name so we know you're there. Uh, Eric Jones, were you in before? No, I'm thinking of Ryan Jones. So Eric Jones, I think you are, You might be new. Let me know if you're not. But uh, either that, welcome. Uh, good to see you here. Should I have more beef stew? I should have more beef stew. If you guys don't mind that sound. Now I got a fork full of cod liver oil. With a, oh, it's solidifying. I guess that's fat. Oh, this is going to be unpleasant, I think. Yeah, it's and, and you can kind of feel it with the fork that, that the beef is hardening. Wow. Okay, that's what it does. It's cold. I might use that. Like stuff a pepper, right? Stuff a pepper with that. I might use it for something else, like to put in something. Maybe um, maybe make fried rice with it. Um, but just as it is, it's like, it's a mouthful of beef. So. Not bad, though. That'll be my dinner. Eric, this is my second live stream. I missed first week because I had to work. I'm sorry to hear that, but I think it was because we did it on a, the first one. We did it on a Friday, and I think people told us, "Hey, we'd we'd would rather you, you do it on a Saturday so that we can we can attend." And so, um, so yeah, welcome. I'm glad you were able to join us uh, on our third week. And again, uh, for anybody watching, if you're wondering when the next one is, just assume unless I change it up that we're always going to do it on Saturday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. And the time just flies by because like uh, uh, the first time I did it, I was saying like, well, I think we're just going to do an hour the, for the first one because we may not get a lot of people and everything. And it got really, really interactive. And I think we went two and a half hours. Uh, this The last one, we, we just kept it at two hours, which I think is a nice tidy number for now. So we'll probably keep this one in for uh, at two hours, which means that we got about another 15, you know, 17 minutes to go. So we'll we'll do that. If you guys really, really love it. I don't mind staying on if you guys don't mind mind being on, but you'd have to be interactive because, um, I, I, you know, for me to just to stay on just to stay on is, is, is pointless. But if you want to be interactive, um, you know, feel free to ask questions. Again, we go back to that um, the thumbnail. Lots of questions there. There must be some questions there. You must have some questions about some of the stuff that's in that thumbnail. But, um, you know, when you get a chance, take a look at it and let me know. More beer. It's Saturday night. And and 
I am being blatantly honest with you when I tell you that Saturday night is my beer night. Uh, so, uh, so I just have this tradition. I don't, I don't drink a lot. Um, and on Saturday nights, I just like to have one beer every Saturday night. And so I'm sharing it with you guys. So, uh, so I used to drink alone and now I have somebody to share it with. Thank you. I thank you for that. What is your guilty food pleasure? Hot dogs. Hot dogs is my guilty food pleasure all the time. They're just so like, if you think about what's in them, they're just so horrible. And, um, and you, it's easy to get a bad hot dog. I don't like bad hot dogs. I like good hot dogs, but hot dogs are like, like it always just takes me to my happy place when I have a hot dog. So yeah, definitely hot dogs, my guilty food pleasure. Um, like even fast food, you know, uh, and there's not a lot of fast food hot dogs and not everybody does it well. Like for instance, uh, five guys, I love five guys burgers. And I know a lot of people say like, oh, it's not as good as, uh, like in and out or something like that. But here's what I love about five guys burgers. The thing I love about five guys burgers. It, well, the thing I love about five guys in general is five guys has about 30 toppings that you can get on that burger for free. And they don't charge you anything extra for it. It may not be 30, but it may be close to 30 and, and they don't charge you for it. And, um, and then their fries, their fries are outstanding. They're like the big ones, like the steak fries, and they have two kinds. They have the regular ones, and then they have the Cajun fries, which are you know Cajun spiced, which are really really nice. My favorite. And so what they do is like like if you, you never order a whole order of 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 the fries because it's too much to eat. And so what you do is you say, I'll have um, I'll have the small order of the fries. And so what they do is they take like it, it's it's the equivalent of a small uh, styrofoam cup, you know, like a coffee coffee cup small coffee cup what is that like a is that nine ounces maybe 10 ounces something like that <clears throat> so what they do is they they take the cup they take the the french fries and they fill up the cup and then they put the cup in the bag and then they take another scoop of it and they just dump all those fries in the bag so even the small one you're getting like more fries than any human being can eat in one sitting and everything so it's i i love that uh, but I love the thing about the – so here's what here is what I'm going to do, and you are you guys are the first one to hear this. So when you see the episode, you're going to know that you heard it here. I am going to go to five, five Guys, and I'm going to get one of their burgers with everything on it. I'm just going to tell them put every single thing, every single topic that you have, put that on it. And we're going to – we're definitely going to do that. Um, the thing I don't like about Five Guys is that when they give you your burger, they put it in a foil pouch. And when they put it in a foil pouch, they do it so it steams the bun. But the problem with steaming the bun is then the bun gets soggy, and I don't like that. So usually what I do is I talk to the manager. They're usually nice about it, and I say, hey, instead of putting it in the foil pouch, can you just like wrap this in a bag? To take one of your paper bags, wrap this in one of your paper bags. And the, they do that for me generally. Um, <clears throat> because their meat is frozen, you can't get it um, medium or medium rare. I mean, medium rare or medium. But yeah, I think they have to cook it medium or medium well, uh, only because when you're cooking frozen meat, you have to make sure that it cooks all the way through. And so that's the only way they do it. But, and, uh, but I'll forgive them that. I, I actually do like the flavor of their meat, and I like the texture of it because it's, it's a lot coarser ground. Uh, uh, so five guys, thumbs up for me. I'm making beer brats with peppers and onions for dinner. That sounds really good. Are you going to just serve them as is? Or are you going to put them in? Uh, are you going to put them in a bun? Or are you going to put them over rice? So how are you going to how are you going to do that? But that sounds really good. Uh, thanks for the stream. Have a good day. Are oh, you taking off? All right, it was good to see you. I hope I see you again next week. You are always welcome in our house. So uh, T H. I'm sorry. You said your name, and I and that's like way back up at the top, and I forgot it already. I will remember it for next time. But T H. Thank you for stopping by. It's always great to see you. Uh, Eric Jones, do you like Neko? Ah, you know, if you look, if you look at that thumbnail and you look at the bottom right on the bottom shelf on the right hand side, I don't know if you can, I, you probably can't see it from here. It's going to be like right here. Um, there's a roll of Neko wafers there. So, uh, so I think you mean Necco wafers, although Necco, which is a New England confectionery company, made other candies besides Necco wafers. So uh, we just recently, I would say probably in the last, uh, maybe it was, I'm trying to remember when that was, April maybe? April, March or April, we did a episode uh, uh, from a company called Sky Bar uh, Confectionery. And they basically bought the rights to make Sky Bars, which used to be a Necco product, and they're making their own Sky Bars. Uh, Spangler, uh, bought the rights for because Neko went, Neko went out of business. I don't know if anybody knew knew that Neko is out of business, and Spangler 
mid-2020 was supposed to be remaking the NECA wafers. Uh, I, I'm imagining with coronavirus that 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 date has slipped a little bit. So I would be surprised if maybe it was going to go to the end of the year or something, but they're going to remake those. But <clears throat> Mary Jane's, uh, Squirrel Nut Zippers, um, I think there was a couple of other ones too that were also Neko candies and everything. But uh, yeah, we did we did do, uh, we did the Sky Bar episode. We also did an episode of um, Neko, other Neko candies, including the Mary Jane and the uh, Neko wafers from um, a last time buy up that we did when we heard they were going out of business. So, so check it out. We did those can those candy reviews and then you can see exactly what I thought about them. Um, just in a bun, brought up to temperature and beer, then grilled with some good quality mustard. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, cheers next to you. Uh, Terry. Okay. Terry. Yes. I, I look forward to seeing you next week. Hope to see you again. Uh, and be careful out there. It's uh, crazy out there. Um, yes, they do sky bars. Yeah. So Janice, are you familiar with sky bars? Are you, uh, uh, did you ever live on the East Coast? Are you ever from New live in New England? Clark Bars used to be a Neko product. Oh, that's right. And I think they still make Clark Bars, but I don't know who's making Clark Bars. Uh, I think. Uh, just got in from feeding the cows and entered into a conversation on Neko wafers. Uh, do you really have cows, Pork Chop Express? Do you, do you really own cows? That is challenging. Um, I, I suppose if you if you are born into a family where they're raising cows and everything, then then something that you're used to. But uh, you know, a city slicker like me, uh, you know, who hasn't been around cows very often, that's like I look at that as very very challenging. Like I've taken care of dogs and cats before, and I think they're challenging. To take care of a very very large animal, even more challenging. Are they uh, are they meat cows or are they dairy cows? Um, just let me know. Just write something down there. So uh, four beef, one horse, four beef. So they're, they're meat cows. Uh, four beef, one horse, three pigs, 40 chickens. Nice. That's, that's a farm. That is a farm. Uh, so let me ask you a um, controversial question. Would you eat horse or have you eaten horse? Like you have a horse, and I imagine it's a working horse. Uh, you have a small farm like that. I would imagine that the horse works, just does work. But. I don't know if at any point in time that you like, oh, we have to put the horse down, but nothing's going to go to waste. Uh, didn't know. Do you eat horse? And if you, you do, what do you think of horse? Uh, not the East Coast. We get sky bars from Galco. Oh, right. Galco's, of course. I think we may have actually had this conversation before, but I love Galco's because they have like candies from all over. Uh, them and um, what is the other place? Um, Rocket Fizz. If there's a Rocket Fizz near you, Rocket Fizz also carries a lot of those unusual and obscure candies. They weren't carrying when I was when I, I took a tour of the Sky Bar factory, and they weren't uh, Rocket Fizz wasn't carrying them at the time. But they said that they were just starting to expand, so the only place you could get them were, were online, uh, shipped directly from the manufacturer. But they said they were they were they were going to go more commercial. So I think at some point in time, Galco's and uh, Rocket Fizz will have them. Uh, beef, yes, beef. Um, what is the, what is the old, what is the TV saying? Beef. It's, it's what's for dinner. I think it's what it is. Uh, hope one day to be able to say just came in from feeding the cows. That would be a fun thing. That would be a fun thing. I would like to, I would like to say, I just came in from the other room feeding the cows. That would be interesting. <clears throat> that would be really interesting. I have not, if zombies came up over the hillside, I would consider horse when that time came. Oh, so, so it's kind of one of those things where because it, 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 be, I, I assume you just don't have a horse. Maybe you, I'm sure uh, you you ride him, maybe, or he works. Right. Either way, you probably create a bond with this horse, and which is why you wouldn't eat horse unless it was absolutely necessary. Like maybe in the in a snowstorm, you could cut it open and crawl inside it and everything. But other than that, you know, that's your friend, that's your uh, coworker, you know, <clears throat> on your farm. <clears throat> And so I understand that completely. Me having grown up in the city, the first time I had an opportunity to try horse, I, I did um, and liked it. But uh, did. Sprinkles is her name. Now, see, you named it. Nobody eats anything that they name. Uh, it doesn't just doesn't happen. So I, I don't eat anything I name. But, uh, but yeah, uh, th that would explain a lot if you named it while you don't eat it. She likes her apple nuggets. What is an apple nugget? Uh, is that like, uh, it's like an apple fritter? Uh, or is that something else that I'm unaware of? And I ask because, you know, if it's interesting enough, we'll do an episode on apple nuggets. Maybe it's like a chicken nugget with apples in it. I don't know. Not sure what apple nuggets are. I know what road apples are. 
And it's very, very possible that your horse actually makes road apples. But uh, I don't see you eating those either. Stoner Kitchen, you are on your way out. It, it was a pleasure having you here. I hope that we'll see you n same bat time, same bat channel. We'll be here next week. We're, we're winding it down here. We got about six minutes left to go. So, you know, I'm open for conversation if you've got it. Uh, but yes, definitely, uh, definitely check us next week. We'll be here at the exact same time, 4 p.m. Pacific time. I don't know what region you're in, Stoner Kitchen. I'm sure you told me, and I'll have to go back there and look. And then I'll remember that for next time. Bye, Stoner Kitchen. Uh, see, Janice is saying goodbye to you, too. So. Be safe out there, Stoner Kitchen. We'll see you next time. My cousin named his cat Dinner, but he never ate it. That is a conundrum. That is definitely a conundrum. I named a cat Dog one time because he thought it was. He thought he was a dog. Um, I've never named um, – I don't think I've ever named an animal after a food. Uh, I know, like, some some have pets named Pudding. Pudding? Pudding? I don't know if that's a, that's a like a just a southern cute nickname or that's a, uh, named after a food. But um, yeah, I don't I I wouldn't name anything that I'm not planning to eat after food. Bye, Janice and Val. Oh, Stoner Kitchen taken off. That's right. Um, yeah, we'll be here next week. I am looking forward to it. And I'll and that the more we do this, the more people's names I remember. Uh, I I hope I didn't forget anybody who uh, logged on. But like I said, uh, just let me know you're out there because I can't. I, all I see is a number. Of how many people are out there and i don't know who that is so you know just put a put a thing in like you know like uh hey uh joe johnson in the house or whatever and just let me know you're out there and then we can we can interact so um about the beer thing though you guys let me know if you want me to let to tell you ahead of time like during the week uh do you want me to let you know what beer i'm gonna have so maybe you can go out and see if you can find it as well we can do it do it together you do let me know um more beer i use the nuggets as positive reinforcement for teaching new behaviors and man i guess that's like a carrot they used to use carrots for that i think you know like the the carrot before the horse the cart no the cart before the horse i don't know i think they used to like a dangle a carrot in front of the horse to make him go i could be wrong but i thought that carrots were a thing that horses loved i, don't, I just don't know i've never looked one in the mouth Gift or otherwise. I think we need some more beef. All this talk about beef and cows. But here's a question for you, though. Um, this is a question for you for Pork Chop Express. How do you differentiate? Because you said the cow, the, ca the cattle is raised raised for beef. How do you differentiate between a cow? And a horse, and I know they're completely different animals. I know I understand that they're completely different animals, but from a from a general standpoint, they're both large, four-legged mammals, right? Now, how do you differentiate between a cow that you know is going to end up in, in as a burger, and a horse which you know is not going to ever be eaten, even if something bad happens to it? I'm curious about that. As he takes a bite of his congealed beef, sky the bike. I want to thank you especially because it is very late there, I imagine. It's probably, what, about 1 a.m., maybe, where you are? Oh, 1.55 a.m. Yeah, almost 2 a.m. So I thank you for making us a part of your late evening or early morning. And uh, hopefully we will see you again next week. Um, if more people want to join from Europe, we may, we may bump it up earlier. I don't know how you guys feel about that. I don't know, like uh, the people in the U.S. feel about that. Um, this is a good time. If you guys would like it at a different time or something, you know, let me know. I'm flexible on it. I want to be able to do it when the most people can can get on it. So, again, when I said I can't tell how many people are, have actually been on total, I can tell how many people are on at any given time. Like right now I see eight, but I have 16 thumbs up. So I know that at least 16 people have been on. But I can't tell exactly. I'm sure there's. I'm sure there's some um, uh, some something that you can look at afterwards and stats that'll tell you how many people are on and everything. I'll check that out. All right, Sky the Bike. We will definitely see you see you then. And if you again have suggestions or something, let us know. It would be like a donkey versus a goat. Uh, you would bet. I've eaten goat. I have not eaten donkey. Guess it would come down to the toughness of the meat and the cuts you get for processing. Well. To be honest with you, horse is lean. It's very lean. 
It's a very muscular animal. Not a lot of fat on it and everything. So depending on how you cook it, it can be very tough. So uh, I imagine donkey would be the same. Um, would I try donkey? Yeah. Uh, would I would I go kill a donkey and eat it? No. When I if somebody if I went to a place that had a donkey on the menu or some somebody was cooking donkey, I, yeah, I would absolutely eat it. So I can't make it next week because I have to work. Eric, uh, you let us know when you can. Uh, so we we may not see you next week, but hopefully we will see you the week after. We'll still be here. We'll still be doing this as long as it's what you guys want. Uh, I see like it's six o'clock right now, so it's about time that we uh, we cut out. But uh, give me your feedback, guys. Leave comments on there. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you would like to see you know more of. Let me know what you would like to see less of. Let me know how the time works for you and everything. Let me know because I want this to be an enjoyable, um, interactive thing for both of us. And I say both of us. I mean two people. I mean me. And all you guys. So I, I, I want this to be a fun, uh, interesting, uh, uh, and um, uh, interactive uh, thing between us. And, and I just wanted to be a fun place for us, everybody, to gather. What are you drinking? Good time to crack one open. Oh, I, I'm sorry. So you must have come in afterwards. This is um, Yeti Imperial Stout from Great Divide Brewing Company in Col in uh, Denver, Colorado. So if you can find this locally, then then try this. It got a big thumbs up from me. It is a very nice stout. Um, so, uh, so yeah, if you get a chance, try it. So we're winding this down right now. I appreciate everybody. It's always good to see familiar faces like Janice and Eric, um, and, and new faces. So, uh, so yeah, let, well, I'm just, I'm going to keep this going as long as you guys want me to keep this going. As long as you guys are getting stuff out of this, as long as you, as, as long as you're finding it entertaining, as long as you're finding it interactive and you're having fun, then we'll continue to do this. So, uh, be here, same bat time, same bat channel next week, Saturday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. We'll see you soon. Be careful. Take care of yourself. Take care of other people. And when you get a chance, get a haircut. See ya. <laughs>